Well, any comments well, left to you? Is that the strategic <laughs> kids table? Kids table. Oh, that's yeah. what you eat a kind of. Is that the kids table? Mm -hmm. That is the kids table. The kids <laughs> table. Nice. We're, you know, it's, I didn't say that. We are at the adults' table. I didn't say that. No shit, really? I didn't say that. Kids table. I didn't say that. Wait a minute, we're the kids' table. No. The kids' table is always well, the fun table, though. In so case you're wondering what the hell you're watching, uh, this yeah, happens to be the 55th episode of the Hall of Comics After Dark oh, Live okay. Online <laughs> Auction. Welcome, everybody. This is July 29th. Yeah, that happens. Oh, happens. You're at the right place, <laughs> and you're almost at the right yeah, time. We're inside at 10 minutes before 7 o'clock when we kick off the live auction. Watch the lamp say, gee, that's, equipment's not paid for yet. So thanks for tuning in, everybody. Welcome to any newcomers. We're going to run through the whys and wherefores here in just a little bit. First, uh, some introductions. I'm Jake, your co-host. Next to me is my friend, cohort, and all-around partner in crime, John. Got a special guest here this evening we'll get to in a little bit. Of course, AG is our Vanna White this evening. Johnny Mack is on the camera. Yeah. Matty Moe is making a special cast appearance. of thousands here. Yeah. Cast of thousands. <laughs> Jesus. Ben Hur is. Ends. No, it's lovely. It's I, I mistook Ryan for Ben Hur. Right. How's it going, Ryan? It's good that you compare me to Ben. Where's the ball gown, AG? Did you get your nails done for the occasion? <laughs> yeah, it's going to be on the. Got it. <laughs> AG's Matty been known to break a nail or two turning those tiles. Oh, all right. So let me get the pan out. And I will show both on the camera. <laughs> so, if folks, you can get your leg up there to show them. I'll give you five bucks. Wow, oh, wow. this yeah, is going to be a good night. <laughs> listen, listen, oh, this is later. a two-hour hour show. I'm going to oh, keep it the two oh, hours. Yeah, we only got eight minutes left here. So, yeah. he, here's the what PG you're looking at, folks. Tonight. Over the next two hours, we're going to have ten see. different rounds. Each round has Let's twelve see. items, so you're going to see 120 total items this evening. Over the next two hours, this is a claim it now auction. That is to say that there are fixed prices on each book. As we turn the tiles, you'll see the prices on them. Keep in mind that in-shop subscribers, people with regular pull lists here at the shop, get 10% off those prices. Always good to know. The way it works is that we'll turn those tiles. You see on the screen there on the top row is A through 6. Bottom row is B1 through B6. Excuse me. I'll catch up here eventually. We'll turn those tiles one at a time, revealing the books behind them. We'll tell you about the book, the condition, all that good stuff. If you see a book that you want, the first person to claim that book in the comments on this live video, that is to say the first person we see at our end on our screen will be announced as the winner. So you would say, I claim A3 or B5, what have you. Uh, we'll get more into those details here in just a little bit. So, there are some freebies, some bonus books that we have hidden throughout each round. One on the top row and one on the bottom row. We call them double haul books. If you claim a book that has one of those hidden behind it, you get that bonus book. There's usually some method to the madness of the books that we include here. That is to say what Ryan has chosen for the evening. You'll find out in a little bit what tonight's theme is. But there are variants that have a common theme running throughout. We also do a weekly raffle. So everybody who makes a successful claim in the evening's auction gets entered in the raffle. I don't know if we have a live shot of the screen. Maybe AG would like to show the fine folks at home what tonight's raffle prize is. It's a copy of IDW's Road of Bones, number one, signed by the artist, artist Alex X. Cormack. Thank you, Alex, if you're out there watching. As well as a print signed by Alex, a Road of Bones, 11 by 17 or thereabouts print. So one lucky winner will get both of those this evening. If you're not reading Road of Bones, you really should be. It's a great book. Yep. What issues come out? Issue four has come out? Uh, yes. No, we're, 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 waiting on, we're waiting on issue four. It's been one through three so far. I do it on purpose. They've been quite good. So here in just a second after... Uh, <laughs> John's about to take over here and give you some of the deeper, <laughs> deeper details. And this evening, are you all set, Jake? I think asking. I'm good. This yeah. thing is already off. <laughs> Let's go. Tell all us. right. So you just went through how to claim. That is always posted at the top of our page in the T's and C's. If you ever have any questions, you can refer to that pinned at the top of the page. T's I was, and C's. I was off for two weeks. First thing we want to do is make sure that we respect the fact that it's the first person to show on Ryan's screen. So Ryan's screen is considered the Thanos screen, or even better, the Dark Side screen. All right, so what Ryan sees first goes. Uh, you might be first on your screen. It's however it comes up on Ryan's, and we will make that person the successful claimant. 
We appreciate you respecting that. And again, things are going to happen. You're going to find some lag and you might get a little bit frustrated. That's on your end, not our end. We send out the signal one time simultaneously to everyone. How you pick it up and how you process it is really, again, on your end. If you're running slower lagging, you can disconnect and reconnect back in. That usually solves the problem. Or if you're just having a bad night, we apologize. But any, any sort of uh, negatives, any sort of frustrations, be happy to take those to the side and answer any questions as needed. Um, issues with decisions on the claimants, we talked about that briefly. All grades are quoted are our best estimates. So we all take a look at it and probably come up with our best estimate and based off the Overstreet price guide. If you're familiar, that's considered the Bible of the hobby and that has a, uh, a 0.5 or 0.1 we've seen, right, to 10 scale. We're going to try to quote those to the best of our abilities. And the price is uh, mostly based off of the Overstreet guide, this most recent edition. So we use the Overstreet as the baseline for everything. Any questions, concerns, issues, if you get a book you're not happy with, happy to take it back. 100% satisfaction is what we guarantee. No customers, no haul, no haul after dark. So want to make sure everybody's happy with what they get. Um, please keep the comment section clean, appropriate, and respectful at all times. You know, we have all different age groups, ethnicities, a lot of different people join us, which is cool. What makes it fun? Again, thank you for respecting Ryan's screen as considered the one and true of these successful claims. And with that, Ryan Ford. So you gave me a home address too? Uh, I'll give him Jake's. Cell phone? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no All right. Duke Police Department. Is yes. Duke phone? Yeah, Duke phone. Is it written on the back of the desk? I have a burner phone. Burner phone. All right. Anyway, so if it is your first time joining us for one of our auctions, welcome. And if you, yeah. If you uh, make a successful claim tonight, um, we need your email address sent to us um, via private message on Facebook so we can invoice you. Uh, we invoice through PayPal, so we need the email address that is associated with your PayPal account. Uh, if we don't get your email address, you don't get your books, everyone's bummed out. Yeah, bummed out. I'm bummed out, yep. Um, if you have Drew been- can't eat, basically, what happened? Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're gonna, oh, yep. Stay on diet. Yeah, got no Sarah McLaughlin in the background. All right. Um, <laughs> if you have joined us for our auctions before, um, we you already have your Lachlan? email addresses, uh, so we are all set on that. Invoices will be sent out tomorrow um, by noontime, um, so you should have them then. Any questions, feel free to email us, call us. Um, yeah, there we go. Nicely done, Ryan. Thanks, everybody. Can you tell we've been off for two weeks? We're a little bit rusty, but uh, one way or another, we'll get this thing done. Who was rusty? Two minutes left, Rusty. Rusty Trombone. <laughs> oh, man. Why'd you have to go there? You got to get on that, man. Let's we, go. We've got two minutes left here. We're going to kick things off at 7 o'clock sharp. I saw Mooj this weekend. I was jacked. I can tell. I love the Mooj. It's about love. It's about passion. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's always good to remind people if you got a pull list here at the Hall of Regular Subscriber, you get 10% off the prices you're going to see here this evening. And, John, there was something else you wanted to remind. Oh, yes, please, folks, if you are so ball, inclined, please. do us a favor and share this. You can always share the, share live, away, share share the, the live video. Share the love. Spread the Hall After Dark love as far as it'll go, which is, I don't know. We have a lot of infinite. We kind of sound like Ego, the living planet. <laughs> Just spread the seed, baby. <laughs> There's a little share button right there. All you gotta do is touch Hit it. Share and say, hey. Ready to go. Had a week off. Everybody have a good week off. Good last Monday. Yeah. Yeah. Got Felt to the beach. Felt kind of weird. Felt kind of weird. Catching up on our TV binging. There you go. Talking about watching the boys. Anybody out there catch that over the weekend? No spoilers. No yeah. spoilers. Absolutely no spoilers. Once you're done with Stranger Things, though, boys is next. Yeah, I'm coming down the stretch on Stranger Things. I haven't been overwhelmed You're not done with yet? it. Nah, I just what are you up to? What episode? The seventh one. You haven't started. Seventh one. I, seventh one. Seventh I think one. the You've third. You've seen the first two seasons. Yeah, yeah we'll figure it out. I just have like four different shows I'm in the middle of right now, and it's just like I don't need to add. And he means over. right yeah. now. He's like watching. People them are like, who the hell is female voice? Did you introduce Harley D? Or did you? Oh no! Well, I was gonna say for the round number five. voice? I know you can throw your voice really well, Jake. That was great. Special guest this evening that will be hosting round number five. Harley D is here to pimp her comics. So Some great comics. Yeah, check it out. Stick around for that. It happens in round number five. A little something different in the mix uh, since it's, her inventory is obviously different than what we bring to the party. So. And it's nice to have a female on here. No offense, guys. It no, is. no. We always, <laughs> it is. It's always good to have female comic readers out absolutely. there. Absolutely. Wow. 
Oh, Paul needs it. needs a little extra estrogen. We have actually quite a few. We're pretty fortunate in that regard. Yep. So it's great yeah. to have you. That'll be fun. But yeah, definitely. All right, seven o'clock. At least it's keeps these guys on their toes. Time you know for I mean? round number one. Oh, yeah, I'm sure that this is going to help rein them in. Absolutely. This will do yeah. it. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. This thing's going to ugly quick. Let's play All right, comics. round one. Let's go. Round number one, A1. First book tonight is going to be a copy of Uncanny X-Men number 22. This is a fairly new release. This is es estimated to be in near mint, near mint plus condition. This is the Carnageized variant by J. Ancieto. This is a sold out new hot book, $10. So if you'd like to claim that in the comment section, A1. First one to Ryan wins the book. Obey accordingly. As we go, so we're going to do a total of 10 of these rounds. 120 books in two hours. Under two hours. A2. A2 is this, this is a 3X full set. These are copies of Green Arrow, The Longbow Hunters. Issues one to three. These are from 1987. Near mint, near mint, minus and above the estimated grades of each one of these books. This is a full set created by Mr. Mike Grell, who did the writing and the artwork. Issue one gives us the first appearance of Shadow, who is a major carrier character in the Green Arrow mythos. So first shadow, one to three, full set, near mint, near mint, minus $15. A2, thank you, A, 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 G, A, 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 new, all new Wolverine number two from 2016. This book is estimated to be in near mint or better condition. This book features the first appearance of Gabby slash the Honey Badger. So first Honey Badger, first print, near mint or better, really nice book, $35. Honey Badger don't. I like the, Gabby's pretty cool. So Gabby's the clone of X-23, so second generation Wolverine, correct? Yeah, does that mean she's yeah, like, is that like she's the clone of the clone? The clone of it's the clone yeah. of the clone. She's kind of translucent. Oh, the clone of the clone. Starting to fade. Not as sharp as the original. Right. Brought a pretty popular character and a nice book for 35 bucks, let me tell you. A4, please. Fourth book in this round is going to be a copy of Image Comics, The Ride. This is issue number one. This is a fairly new released book. Near Mint, Near Mint Plus is the estimated grade of this Adam Hughes cover. This is the first print of this new hot Image Comics book. Only $8. That's the same outfit I wear to bed. Cool little Adam Hughes. That just wrecked I it for me. Uh, A5. With the horn and everything. Holy oh, yeah. mackerel. Oh, yeah. This is a copy of uh, Vertigo Comics yeah. slash DC, actually. This is V for Vendetta, issue number one from 1988. Near Mint or Above is the estimated grade of this first print book featuring the work of Mr. Alan Moore, who did the writing on this. This would be, yes, the first Natalie Portman, but why'd you have to go and soil it? Uh, oh. V for Vendetta. Now, that movie was not good. Oh, that movie was not I good. There are parts that not, are. Nah, not considered mm. to the source material. Sorry. Okay. But to each hey, your own. I'm glad you liked it. Good opportunity. I'm glad, I'm, G A -G, I'm glad you liked it. A6. <laughs> A6 is a copy of West Coast Avengers, issue number nine. This was released er early this year. It is a near mint estimated copy. This features the first appearance of the character Alloy, who is Ramon Wells. This has a low print run and is a sold out book. So if you're into first appearances, Joe Barone for A2. A2, A2 to Mr. Joe Barone. Barone. Hey, Joe. Going with the classic longbow hunter. I think Joe gave us the rope dope earlier. Said he wasn't going to yeah, be Yeah, and then here he is. Yeah, yeah, that that'll trick. It. There it is. Good to have him. So, yeah, West Coast Avengers, first appearance of the character Alloy. Near mints the estimated grade, $15. That's nice his first appearance. Spot A6. Okay, now we're going to come around the corner here with six minutes left. This is a copy of Sensational Spider-Man issue number 30. This is from 2006, and the book is estimated to be in near mint or above condition. This book features a Clayton Crane cover. So that's the real big sell on it. People love that Clayton Crane. Clayton Crane, excuse me. This is one of his covers. Start ferreting out, people start to get large followings, and people try to go back and find the whole catalog. Yep what they did. So if you're a Clayton Crane person, it's a great pickup for eight bucks. In 2006, I don't think, uh, those are kind of an odd time for Marvel, yeah. right? You know, there's not too many of those around. That was after Spider-Man got unmasked in the Civil War, so it ties into some of that, too. Mm. Pretty cool. I have a couple of those tonight. we got some really weird shit tonight, let me <laughs> tell you. No lie. X, uh, go do the next one, please. B2. B2. B2 is a copy of X-Force issue 11 from 1992. This is book is estimated to be in near mint or above condition. It's the first appearance of the character Domino, so the first real appearance of Ms. Domino. And then we have the third appearance of Deadpool, all in the same book featuring white pages. Near mint or above, X-Force 11, first Domino, first real Domino. It was copycat before. Yep. So first appearance of a major X-Men or X-Force character. 
B3. Got to warm them up here. This copy of Marvel Team Up issue number 83 is from 1979. This book is estimated to be in near mint minus or above condition. This book features a team up between the Spider Man and Nick Fury, featuring um, Chris Claremont writing, and it is a newsstand copy. Newsstand denoted in the left hand corner with a barcode. Sometimes you'll see that etched out with a bar through it, or you'll see a character's face on it. Those would be ones that went to direct markets like comic shops. Newsstands went to pharmacies and places like that. Tended to be mishandled, tended to get ripped up, and so people tend to like to collect those at as high grade as possible. I have Joe Burrow for B2. B2, first domino for Joe. And Tina King for B1. Tina B1 Crane. to Tina King, Thank really? You, Tina. All right. Yeah, Clayton Crane. She knows. And Carrie Jansen for B3. Oh, oh Tina got the first oh, double haul book of the night. That double haul. Uh, nice going, Tina. Who's going home with a nice Yours Rider? Deadpool variant. She'll be happy. At least it's a Marvel book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, she'd use it for Kendall, right? right? B3 is Carrie. B3 to Carrie Jansen. Jansen. Thank you, Carrie. I know that guy. I know that. Hey, man, you know that guy, Carrie? All right, B4. B4 is a copy of The Fantastic Four, Volume 1, Issue Number 87 from 1969. This book is estimated, speaking of Carrie, is estimated to be in fine, a very <laughs> fine condition. This uh, book features the writing of Mr. Stan Lee, the artwork and cover by the great Jack Kirby. So a true Silver Age book, Fantastic Four 87, find a very fine condition, 40 bucks. Possibly the most offbeat ending of the year, according to the cover. The, fan the price of a Fantastic Four book is criminally and insanely low. No, that'll change. And that'll enough. change. Yeah. So I'm telling you, the Fantastic Four is where to be. You yep. get some great deal, Silver Age stuff, great condition. And when that thing's a Marvel, a Marvel movie, because you know it's going to crash. It's going to do it. They're going to draw on all those issues for all the different wacky plots. Oh. Gonna so a nice Silver Age book, 40 bucks. B5, again, over street prices. This is a copy of New Avengers Annual, issue number three from 2010. Nearman Nearman Plus is the estimated grade of this book, which features writing by Mr. Brian Michael Bendis and features a great cover and interior art by Mike Mayhew. Mm. I like it because it pulls together all of the New Avengers ladies. So you get the classic Carol Danvers wearing her lightning bolt costume, the Spider Woman, Jessica Jones. Yeah, front and center is Jessica Jones and her superhero and persona, which you just usually don't see. No. Mm -mm. Pretty cool stuff. So I'm a big fan of the New Avengers, all that stuff tied into Secret Invasion and the Aftermath, the end, and all that stuff. So. Great book, eight bucks. B6, final one of this round, is a copy of Daredevil, issue number 182 from 1992. Near Mint, Near Mint or Above is the estimated grade of this book, which it features the writing and artwork by Mr. Frank Miller. Inks by Klaus Jansen. This book does have white pages, and the guide on it is 35 bucks plus. What? Say what? So a nice book, 25 bucks, Near Mint or Above. Frank Miller, Daredevil, a classic. Hug the Electro Tombstone. Yeah. yeah. So that's it for me for round one, Jake. Two minutes and 13 seconds. Nice. Great job, everybody. So two minutes left before we clear the board and put up a fresh new set of books. This is your last chance. Let's go through them real quick, see what's still left. That uncanny X-Men carnageized variant is very nice, sitting in spot A1. B5 to Tina King, picking up the new Avengers annual. Thank you, Tina. Just a painted cover by Mike Mayhew. Is, is, is Eric tied and gagged in the closet oh, somewhere where he, can't, <laughs> awesome. where he can't get to the internet? Tina's the Marvel you. All right. She's the Marvel yeah, version of me. In spot, universe. I can't believe this book's still up on the board. A3 is all new uh, Wolverine number two from 2016. It's the first appearance of Gabby, a.k.a. Honey Badger. It's also a first print. It's in near mint condition or better for just $35. In spot uh, A4, something a little bit different from Image Comics, is a great Adam Hughes cover on the ride, number one. Also a first print, Near Mint to Near Mint Plus condition, just $8. The always uh, popular V for Vendetta, number one, sitting in spot A5, written by Alan Moore. If you haven't read it, you absolutely should. $20 in Near Mint or above condition. And we've got just about a minute left in spot... A1 from Matt D. A1 hey, Matt. to Matt D. Yep. Papa Matt D. Thanks for tuning in, buddy. Hope all is well at home. Daddy Matt. Real. Dave yep. Finn for A3. A3 going to Dave Finn. Dave Finn doesn't miss a beat. No flies on him. Thank you, sir. Keeping the streets That's safe. A That's a good buy for that one. Safe for comic book collectors. What do we got? Half a minute left. A6. It's a first appearance of a very low print run Marvel comic. West Coast Avengers number nine is the first alloy, a.k.a. Ramon Wells. 
And that's uh, Nearman Condition, $15. Who knows what they're going to do with that character. Last two books left are that Fantastic Four sitting in spot B4. That is number 87 from 1969. Just 40 bucks and fine, a very fine condition. Fine, very fine. Black cover, that thing is yeah. so awesome. Yeah, it's probably it's a great it's copy nice. this book. I was surprised. So that just about does it. Don't forget, B6, Daredevil number 182. Near men to better condition. Great first round, everybody. Awesome. Thanks a lot. We're going to clear the board. Or well, that is to say, AG is going to clear the board. AG. And get ready for round number two. And Maddie Mo. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a short lived cartoon series. Round two. <laughs> yeah. Is round two your favorite round, John? Uh, I just said get ready, so I'm trying to hype Oh, uh, okay. Oh. John likes Are you a hype man? Ready, yeah, he's a hype man back then. John there. likes to call it the deuce. The deuce. John's a, John's a hype man. Speaking of twos and deuces and second things, there are second chance opportunities for all these books this evening. So maybe you're drifting off to Slumberland tonight. You're thinking, oh, why didn't I pick up that awesome Daredevil book in spot B6, round number one, hint, hint. Well, you can get in touch with us via Facebook message, email, phone call, what have you. Come by the shop, take a look at it. And we will make it available to you as long as it hasn't been claimed. Uh, John does a great job on Wednesdays of putting up any books that have not been claimed on the wall, as little or as many as there may be, and you can check them out in person. Or, like I said, contact us before that, and we'll make them available to you. Any books like the Fantastic Four book that we, that we just featured? If exactly. If you'd like to take like a scanned one. version of that. Please send a request along. Ryan does a fantastic job of getting that over to you, and so you can get a really good look at the book before you. You do an pick okay. It up. You do an okay That's job. Fine, Ryan. very fine. That was that was my book of the round. That was your book of the round. It was. Oh. So coming out of a coming out of a bye week last week, we're gonna try to keep this week nice and affordable. Put a mm. nice little package of books, and so everybody gets a little bit of everything tonight. Some yeah. good stuff. And I'm looking forward to Holly D's round in round five. Pretty cool. Bat centric, Holly centric stuff. She's DC, a big fan. A full big round DC. Of a lot of DC independent. Did you say there's going to be a full round of DC coming Almost. out? DC independent. Woo! No Marvel in that. No, she doesn't wow. have a Marvel book in. So I round five is Marvel free. Not that that's a bad thing. It's not that it's a bad thing. No, it's a bad thing. But you're Variety a is girl. the spice of life. It Nothing is. wrong with that. So, all right, we're going to start round two here. Thanks for hanging with us. Awesome job. Reset AG. the board. We're going to look at another Ready? 12 new books. Please, AG. A1. Right out of the gate, it's a copy of Swamp Thing, issue number 52 from 1986. Near Mint above conditions, the estimated grade of this book, which has white pages and is written by Mr. Alan Moore with, uh, with art by Rick Veitch. Awesome Swamp Thing in Arkham Asylum, so Alan mm -hmm. Moore writing a little bit of Batman Arkham Asylum stuff. Awesome, really cool stuff. If you've never read Alan Moore's Swamp Thing, Ron, you should do yourself a yep. favor and pick it up. Yep. It's pretty thought-provoking, and the whole thing is pretty amazing. So Very atmospheric, really creative. So this is within that yeah. first run of that series, but this is one of those team-ups where you get yeah, the Swamp Thing with Batman. So really nice copy. Near Mentor above, only 15 bucks. Next one, please, sir. A2. A2 is a True Silver Age copy of Iron Man number 59 from 1973. This book features white pages. It is estimated to be in very fine near mint condition. So looking at an 859-ish here. Maybe pushing a 9-2, real nice copy of the book, but it does have white pages. So pretty cool stuff here. Iron Man, number 59 from 1973 with a George Tusca cover and interior art. Michael Thompson for A1. Oh, Ooh, Michael. Oh, the Michael DC. Whoa, the double Michael. line. Oh, DC, Michael. Michael, Michael, Michael right, are you right. okay? Now look at that. He throws the, he throws the panel. Can somebody check, the panel. check Michael's? There it is. That's a great pickup. Yeah. A3. A3 is a copy of Winter Soldier issue number two. This is a fairly new release of this book. This book is estimated to be in near mint, near mint plus condition. First appearance of the character RJ, and this was a sold out book. So yep. now one of those spec worthy books. I guess the Winter Soldier gets his own Bucky. So essentially, it was also one of those very low print run Marvel books where shops just weren't buying a lot of this book. And it's, a, this it's the Stanley it's tribute issue as well. So net net of new Marvel character, first appearance. It'll be, yeah, Winter Soldier's Bucky, RJ. A4. I love the Hulk people. you got to give the Hulk people some Hulk, I'm telling you. This is a copy of Planet Scar. This is the prologue one-shot from 2009. Near Mint or above conditions the estimated grade of this book, which was out in 2009. Only $8. Sometimes it's tough finding these one-shots that were tied into previous events, so anytime we get our hands on some, we try to put them up because people look for them to plug the collections with. You don't see them. 
So this is one example of it. Planet Sky, the prologue. One shot, 2009. Near mint or above, only eight bucks. A5, please, Mr. AG. That's Mr. AG to his friends, doll. And this is a copy of Silver Surfer Black, issue number one. So this is a fairly new release. Near mint or above condition for this one in 25 Gerard Parel variant. This was a new hot sold out book. So the Parel one in 25, near mint or above condition, only 20 bucks. People digging the Donny Cate Silver Surfer yeah, Black. It's crushing. Awesome. Wacky stuff. Yeah. It's crushing it. A6. A6. Thank you, sir. There's a copy of Captain Marvel, issue number 39 from 1975. Very fine plus near mint minus is the estimated grade of this book, which features the first appearance of Aaron, who is one of the watchers. What? This book was written by Mr. Steve Englehart and features pencils by Al Milgram and inks by Mr. Klaus Jansen. Captain Marvel 39 from 1975. 15 bucks. Joe Barone for A5. It's a bargain. A5, A5 to Joe, Joe Barone. I'm glad Joe's not with us tonight. <laughs> Joe's the man. The look man. Always delivers. Cool stuff. So, great Captain Marvel book. Going to take the corner now, AG. Thanks, buddy. B1. B1 is a copy of Thor. Yeah, Sorry, never heard of her. Uh, Thor, number eight from 2015. Near Mint, Near Mint Plus is the estimated grade of this Aaron Wilson New York City Comic Con variant. So this is the first time that Jane Foster is revealed as the new Thor. So Thor number eight, 2015, Near Mint, Near Mint Plus. You might have heard about Jane Foster is going to be in the new. Yeah, yep. the stuff is hitting it. Yep. People are checking it. Thor, do it. Me too. Do it. Do it. Uh, Carrie Jansen for A6. A6 to uh, Carrie Jansen. Carrie for 15 bucks. A nice book. Thank you, buddy. I think Carrie probably graded that book for us. He probably <laughs> knows all about that book. Ringer. He's been waiting. Ringer. For, waiting for that one. Uh, a4 to Tina King. It's just the person for that book. Plug it into the, the computer. I, I don't know if I want to be here when oh, Eric comes to pick up his book. Tina's got Woo! another double haul. It's two Double Tina. Two Tinas. Those it's like two dragons. Nice Deadpool, variant. Deadpool variant. Issue number eight. It's good stuff. Daniel Briggs for B1. B1 to Daniel Briggs. Daniel Briggs, Hawaii. Thank you very much. I didn't get a chance to talk about Superman. Issue number 100 from 1995. This book is estimated to be in near mint condition. It is a first print copy foil cover of the death of Clark Kent. So we get Superman back and then we kill Clark Kent. What? Pretty cool if you've never read it. Pretty interesting. This is a copy of Superman issue number 100 from 1995. Near mint's the estimated grade. First print foil cover, the death of Clark Kent. DC was determined to off him one way or another, I guess. Man, you need <laughs> Clark Kent. Clark Kent's more important than Superman, and just like Batman's more important than Bruce Wayne, it's the exact dichotomy. Mm -hmm. right? Gotta flip it. Wow. B3. That's a thinker. It is. B3 is a copy of this guy called Venom. That's not what it's called. It's called Venom. This is issue number three from 2018. Near mint, near mint, or above condition for this third print copy. Issue number three. First null. First first appearance of first null cover. And first time null. on the cover. Both. I'm always right? I'm always jacked and pumped about this one. Yeah, Manoli's not allowed to claim this one. He's in yeah. <laughs> First Nell, so he's the uh, king of the symbiotes? Yes. Oh, God, I'm God. a symbiote. God, oh, he's got now, a better title than I thought. He's in the Silver Surfer series. He's kicking ass there, too? Yeah, yep. So Nell's the man. This is the first cover of this character. This is a third print copy of Venom number 3, 2018, near mint or above conditions. Nice book. B4, please, sir. Duncan Sheik loves Tim. This is a copy of Marvel Team Up number 116, 1982. Very oh. fine. Plus is the estimated grade of this book, which is Spidey and the Valkyrie. John Romita Jr. and Bob Layton created the cover together, and we have a Thor appearance. Oh, do you want this one? Well, th I didn't enter in this round, or I would have <laughs> seen that. Now, oh, now. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, ah. That's all right. Pretty cool stuff. So, Marvel Team Up 116 from 1982. Very fine. Plus or above is the estimated condition here. Spidey in the Valkyrie. I get how it works. Brunhilda. Let's do it. B5. B5 is a copy of the original Marvel Star Wars, number three from 1977. Near Mint is the estimated grade of this book, which has white pages, cover, and some art by Howard Shaken. The guide for this book is 70 bucks. Yeah, what's going on yeah, with Chewie there? Chewy looks like the mighty girl. Chewbacca looked like he escaped from Planet of the Apes for this cover. <laughs> Poor Chewie. That's really not him. That's his stunt double, General Orko. Well, and the stormtroopers look like they're blown up with helium. Uh, yeah, it was, you know, it was good stuff. Michael 30 Thompson for B4. B4 to who? Michael Thompson. Ah, uh, Michael, Michael Thompson. I'm glad you get it. I'm going to have but to yeah, come by But yeah, it's a great copy of the Star Wars book. $70 is the 
the guide for it. So wow. near mint grade or above, and it's estimated to, uh, it does have white pages, excuse me. Okay, it's kicking on for B6, last one of the round. Last one of the round is a copy of What If. This was a one-shot from 2005. Near Mint is the estimated grade of this book, which features What If Magneto was the one that had started the X-Men instead of Professor X. So what if Magneto had formed the X-Men instead of Professor X? I always love that marble girl, green, yeah. yellow outfit. That's a, it gets me there. But yeah, pretty cool stuff. So how the X-Men would have turned out. And I'm not 100%, but that cover from here sure looks like Jimmy Chung. Jim, Jim, you call him Jimmy Chung again, huh? Well, Chris Claremont did the writing on this one. So this uh, is a one-shot from 2005, near mint, 10 bucks. Again, one of those ones. What If 2 is going to get its own animated show. Oh, that's right. Awesome. That 10's looking a little kind of hoboish. <laughs> what happened there? Jesus. Did somebody not give a give an AF uh, or Matthew what? Matthew Calagero for B6. Somebody oh, got B6. Yeah. Matt, B6. It's awesome. Thanks, Matt. He, he wasn't dissuaded by the, 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 no, the skew the price. Piss poor price tag. That's all right. Sometimes <laughs> be a skew is the way to go. Stand Thanks, John. Great way. job as always. Are you got me out of here? Okay. I am because we only got a minute and a half <laughs> left, and I want the fine folks at home to know that sitting up there in spot A2 is Iron Man number 59 from 1973. Very fine near mint condition. That copy's got white pages. It's nice. A3, Winter Soldier number two, featuring the first appearance of RJ, the character RJ. And it's $10, near mint, near mint plus condition on that one. With just over a minute left, we can check out the bottom row, sitting in spot B2. It's Superman, number 100 from 1995, with a great foil cover Joe on that. Joe Barone for B5. Joe Barone's picking up B5. That's Star Wars number three for 50 bucks. Thank you, Joe. First Gorilla Chewy. First Gorilla Chewy, <laughs> Ryan says. I got the peanut gallery right here in my chirping in my ear. What's that? It really is. Yeah. Michael Thompson for A2. A2 to Michael Thompson. Now we're talking stack Michael. Them right in Michael's box. Yeah. What are you doing? And that books. last book, which is really the go to here left up on the board in spot B3, is Venom number three. That is a hard to find third print of number three where they put uh, Null on the cover. It's also his first appearance. $20 for that near mint condition or better book. And as anybody who's been reading Silver Surfer knows, that character is not going anywhere. Donny Cates likes him. He's going to put him in everything, apparently. So we are almost at the end. Bueller. Bueller. Almost at the end of round number two. Thanks so much, everyone. You blew some real holes in that one. We like that. I'm going to set the board for round number three. Round number three coming up next, which means now... We get to talk about this week's DC new releases coming at you pretty soon. The yellowish blue ones. The yellowish blue ones. <laughs> Trying to make it as easy for you as I can. So yeah, this Wednesday's a the fifth Wednesday of the month. So a lot of the normal DC books aren't going to be there. They're going to be a bunch of annuals and specials. But that doesn't mean you got to pass it up. There's really cool stuff like. Batman Secret Files number two, which ties into this whole City of Bane storyline they got going on in the regular Batman book right now. Uh, one of the annuals I just mentioned is Red Hood Outlaw number three, which is already sold out at Midtown Comics, strangely enough. Not sure why. Uh, one of the bigger books this week I'm looking forward to, I think a lot of people are, Batman Last Night on Earth, the second issue of the Scott Snyder, Greg Capullo Batman event going on right now. If you didn't pick it up, we still have copies left of issue number one here in the shop. Very cool sort of imaginary story of this, of what would happen in the DC future. It's somewhat post-apocalyptic, Batman wandering the wasteland with Joker's head in a fishbowl. It's weird, it's kooky, it's well-written. Check it out. It's not what you expect. I liked it. Joker's head in a fishbowl? Yeah. Did you read that? It's pretty cool. Justice League Dark Annual Number 1 is another one of the DC books out this week. And then we have the finale, the final issue of The Batman Who Laughs, uh, also by Scott Snyder. Batman Who Laughs Number 7 will be out. So you Batman fans have some work, work great, cut out for you this great week. Great slide. Thanks, man. Looks awesome. Yep. Batman last night on Earth. Do we still have, yeah, we have some second prints of number one still yep, available, yep. don't we? Absolutely. Cool. It's a nice Good looking job. format and nice looking book all around. We're just about ready to kick off round number three. Thanks, AG, Matt, John. All doing a great job. Keep this thing on the tracks. All right, let's do it. Round Hi. number three. How you doing, Ryan? A1. Good. 
good. Very well, thank you. Savage Avengers, issue number one. This is a fairly new release. This book is estimated to be in very fine or above condition. This is a 1 in 25 Simon Bianchi variant cover. So the Wolverine, Dark Avengers, I really in, in, enjoyed this run so far. It's a really good book. You're not reading it? It's a fun book. Yeah, you did a, a nice really job with it so far. I'm enjoying it. Do yourself a favor, folks. Pick this up. It's Dark good. Avengers. Good read. It's issue number one. So very fine or above condition, only eight bucks. A2, please. A2, oh. here she is. This is the first, this is a copy of Thor, issue number one from 2015. Near Mint, Near Mint Plus is the estimated grade of this book, where we find the first Jane Foster as Thor. So good. So this is a lower print run than the original print run. Second print, so hard to find Near Mint, Near Mint Plus, only 25 bucks. Go look that one up on eBay quick. I'll wait. Such a good, it was a great story. Oh, it's too. such a it's good stuff. story. <laughs> First Jane Foster S, though I know you two, you two are gushing. Mm -hmm. I, I, mm -hmm. I know you guys both like Jason Jane Aaron. Foster. He knows how to write a story. Uh, that is the second print copy, number one, twenty-five bucks. A three, Joe please. A two to a Joe Barone. Joe Barone is. He must be sh sneaking looks. <laughs> Matt D for A one. A one to Matt D. D. It's a great one, even if it's just a good copy to read. It's very fine, usually below Matt's standards, but. This one I'm pretty psyched about is a copy of Electra, issue number 23 from 2003. Near Mint, Near Mint or Above is the estimated grade of this book, which is a, features a Bilson cabbage cover with Tom Palmer inks. And we get the first appearance of a character called Frank Bauer. Make a tie into 24 in here somewhere. Frank's related to Jack. It's really weird stuff, but the net, net of it is Bilson cabbage cover being inked by Tom Palmer. Great stuff. Awesome cover. Only 10 bucks for that one. Next one, please. A4. Expotus. This is Barack Panther. This was a book put up by Antarctic Press. This was a one shot with an extremely low print run from 2018. Near Mint, Near Mint Plus is the estimated grade of this book. Only eight bucks. So Antarctic Press did their own little series called Barack Panther. It's one of the variants, which is homage, obviously. A5. Jake's trying to delicately put snacks in a. just. It's like listen to how you drop paint cans. What's going on over there? <laughs> Holy mackerel. This is a copy of Power Pack, issue number two from 1984. Near Mint, Near Mint or Above is the estimated grade of this newsstand copy. This is the second appearance of the group Power Pack. Number ones are going for silly money. Is this going to be a Disney Plus show? It is. Disney Plus, the Power Pack is coming. Yep, newsstand copy of number two. Only 15 bucks. Great copy. A6. Good Yoko Ono tune. So this is a little lot that we put together. I think we should probably congratulate Ryan on this one. These are a copy of a book called Rip Off Comics. So Rip Off Comics has their own set of books, kind of combined a lot of counter culture people, including the fabulous furry freak brothers. So we get the second appearance of the fabulous furry freak brothers in this lot. You have four issues total. It's got issue number two, which is a second print of that book. You have issues number three, which is a first print. Issue number four, which is a first print. And issue number six, which is also a first print. So these are true underground comics, right? Yeah, true right? underground comics for the time. You've got some pretty cool characters. you got Freddy the Cat's in there. And again, a lot of counterculture underground stuff. And the Fabulous Furry Freak Brothers just got option for their own animated show, I saw. Whoa. So everything's getting done into something here. So Whoa. Ripoff Comics, a 4X lot, really nice condition. They're all in VF, VF minus or above. 30 bucks for the lot. FT and the King for B5. 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 We haven't, got, we haven't, we haven't gotten, gotten to B5, B5 yet. yet. Well, we got to A5, so it's A5. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> Tina Ryan's picking She's the books for you, apparently. That's yeah. it. Mm -hmm. it's, I was like, yeah, she you must like I, Now I want to know what's on uh, under B5. Yeah. Yeah. John Scheinbart for A3. A3, Mr. Scheinbart. How are you, buddy? Sorry, I get more than my rights and lefts confused, I guess. Oh! Oh! Ah, ah, John, John Scheinbart. Scheinbart's got a double haul. Another guy. Who's got himself a nice Deadpool V Gambit variant? Right. I'm sorry, I can't figure out the theme yet tonight. Me neither. B Gambit. <laughs> Coming around the corner here. Five minutes left in the round. B1. B1. I'm objecting pumped about this. This is a 2X lot of Batman movie adaption. So this 2X lot features the books for Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. <laughs> You're not going to put me in the cooler. The, Go the, back to Batman cover, Forever, though. The cover on that one's better than the movie. It is actually pretty <laughs> phenomenal stuff. Net Net of Batman Forever is I put the set together because Val Kilmer's coming. 
So if you want to get something signed, potentially here it is. Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. These are the oversized adaptions from 1995 and 1997. Near mint, near mint or above is the estimated grade. Ten bucks for both of them. The Val's going to be at uh, Terrific Con, yeah. I believe. The farther away I get from Batman Forever, the more I start to warm up to it. As ridiculous as it is, Tommy Lee Jones is terrible. But let's go to B2. They're just doing the. They're both doing the Joker. I feel like I'm on the tail right now. This is a copy of Amazing, <laughs> Amazing Spider-Man issue 25. This was a fairly new release. It was released at San Diego Comic Con. In fact, Near Mint or above is the estimated grade of this book. Less than 4,000 printed. Oversized, new, hot, Amazing Spider-Man San Diego Comic Con variant. Ryan Otley cover. Want me to say that again? <laughs> yeah, he's a pretty cool half-colored, half-black and white sketch cover. Cool stuff. Only available at San Diego Comic Con. PX exclusive. B3. B3 is a copy of The Invaders, issue number two from 1975. Very fine, very fine. Plus is the estimated grade of this book, which is written by the great Roy Thomas and features artwork by John Romita Sr. Yes, John Romita Sr. did the artwork on this. First appearance of Brain Drain. Never heard of him. First appearance of Brain Drain. I know him well, actually. I think he works here. He does. Works o overtime, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to black out, actually. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to pull this thing over if you guys don't knock it off. B4. B4 is... Yeah, don't make me just rip the cord out. This is a copy of Superman Special. This was a one-shot from 1992. Near Mint or above is the estimated grade of this one-shot, which features writing and the artwork by the great Walt Simonson. Pinups inside the books by Frank Miller, Barry Windsor Smith, and Todd McFarlane. Ooh. So a Superman one-shot. Good cool. stuff, only 15 bucks. One of those really rare, kind of hard to find offbeat ones. Not a lot of them floating around, only 15 bucks. B5, please. B5 is a fantastic copy of Fantastic Four. Wow, see what I did there? Fantastic Four 107 from 1971. Fine to very fine is the estimated grade of this book, which features a fantastic John Buscema cover and interior artwork. Writing by Mr. Stan Lee, and is the first appearance of the character Janice. All right, so we got Kyle Morris for B1. Kyle Morris Kyle picking up B1. All right, I love it. Right. Michael Thompson for B3. Of course, Michael B Thompson. B3 going to Michael mainline. Thompson. She just mainline this stuff. Oh, so, up all right. Oh, Michael Thompson another double haul. He's rocking it. Got himself. I love a nice Deadpool and Daredevil variant cover. Here we go. Anyone figure this out yet? And we have Carrie Jansen for B4. Ah, there B4 it is. B4 to Carrie, Carrie Jansen. Jansen. That a boy. Superman. Well, you don't have that one, Carrie? Come B4, on. He probably has like three of them. You're always looking for that better copy. Find it, I'm going to say. You find that better copy, <laughs> that way you can take the pin up from the lower Last copy. one of the run. <laughs> there it is again. Copy of Thor number two from 2015. Oh, near Mint, near Mint Plus is the estimated grade of the second wow. appearance of Jane Foster as Thor. This is the Justin Stoke variant cover, too, by the way. Snoke? Snoke. Not Snoke. Snoke is the Ice King. Ice King is Snoke. Look it up. But no, it's a copy of Thor number two. Near it, near it, plus for this variant. Second James Foster as Thor. 132, nice. you got your work cut out for you. No, you got this thing down to a science, John. Great job. Minute, minute and a half okay. left after Matt kills himself. Let's check out what we got. Down goes spot. Matthew. A4 still left up there. Barack Panther. It's a one shot up there from 2018. Just eight bucks. A little political satire for you. And sitting in spot A6, something unique. And for those babies. It's a four-issue set of rip-off comics, some true underground comics from 1977 through 1979. You get issues number two, which is a second print. Number three is a first print. Number four is also a first print. And number six is a first print as well. Kerry Jansen for A6. A6. Fabulous Furry Freak Brothers. Awesome, Kerry Jansen. I always knew that Kerry was a secret fan of a Fabulous Furry Freak They're Brothers. They're awesome, man. Thanks, Kerry. So the freaks. There goes good that. Stuff. Thanks, Kerry. 42 more seconds. Just over a half a minute left. Let's check out B2 real quick. Where are my, my amazing Spider-Man fans at? Working? That is a San Diego Comic-Con right variant from this oh, previous awesome. uh, San Diego Comic-Con. Oh, awesome. Can't wait. 25, excuse me, $15. It's in Yearman condition. Ryan Otley, black and white slash color cover there. And over in spot B5, Fantastic Four from 1971. That's issue number 107. In fine, a very fine condition. The colors still pop on that one. Yeah, Stan yeah. Lee was still writing it at that point. Yeah, that is a great combination of the greens and the yellows up there. So some good stuff on the board, folks. Let us know if uh, there's anything that interests you. 
Second chance opportunities abound. Lou Correa for B6. Lou Correa is picking up B6. Right. He knows his sword book. Second Jane Foster. Thanks, Lou. Got Go in there just under the wire, as they say. The love for the Fantastic Four is going to happen. It's coming. The reckoning is coming. So we're going to clear the board as we do. Set up for round number four. Which means this is the perfect time to tell you about our latest exclusive All right. shop variant, which Let's we announced recently. Woo. Announced at the end of last week. Revealed it, rather. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number seven from IDW with a cover by the very talented and oh so popular Craig Russo. 97. What initiative what did I say? 97. You said seven. Oh, well, it's 97, actually. <laughs> There you go. That's why there's not there's the why there's a visual that on the pretty, screen that for was us to look smooth at. Smooth how I showed you. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, yeah, we're gonna be putting this up on sale this Thursday at 1 p.m. on the ye old website. That's www.theholocomics.com. One o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You'll be able to log on and pick these puppies up. I want to make sure people can get lunch before they buy, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's no, it's process. important to shop on a full stomach. I want to make sure the people out west have had a chance to eat breakfast. We're only going to have 970, 970 of these available. The importance behind this issue is that it is in this issue that the new female turtle, Jenica, gets her official colors Woo! and joins the team. Yellow. And she's yellow, not pink. That's she's right. Yes. People excited pink about that. Color. So she officially joins the boys as uh, one too. of Permanent the. Pot, not a, yep. They said they're gonna. She's, she's gonna not. She's not going cool. anywhere. She's not going to show up and disappear. So these will be twelve ninety nine. We're going to have some sets available as well. And want to thank Craig Russo again for really helping us out with this. Not only did he Great get job. it done Crushed in time, it. but he really he nailed it. He uh, delivered just what we had in mind, and better. So it, it came out fantastic. Thank you, Craig. Pretty in shop pretty. subscribers. We'll be able to pick these up for nine ninety nine. Nine ninety nine. And like I said, this that starts this Thursday, one p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Tell all your, all your turtle friends. It should be nine seventy nine. Listen, you I, turtle friends like right. like friends that Why are real turtles. <laughs> what friends? Friends that are real turtles, or yeah. just you like turtle friends that well, like, if, like the turtles. If they've got money, if those turtles have money, then you should tell them. <laughs> Do they got pockets? These all right. Turtles? This is round number <laughs> round four. 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 Let's do it. Let's do it. A one. Speak of her. There she is. All new, all different Avengers number 15 from 2016. Near Mint, Near Mint or Above is the estimated grade of this book, which features an Alex Ross cover, of course, Jane Foster as Thor. This is the first print copy of this book, 2016, only 10 bucks. A2 AG. This is a full 3X set, one of my surprise favorites. It's a copy of Superman and Aliens. So this was a team up between DC and Dark Horse Comics. So Superman Aliens, this is the full 3X set, all first prints. One, two, and three, estimated to be in near mint, near mint plus condition. So the first original story, which is pretty damn cool if you've never read it before. Seems like it'd be a no contest, Superman. You know? Hey, be surprised. Yeah. These aliens, hey, eh, don't Wendell underestimate him. A one to Wendell. A one to Mr. Wendell. So we have a question we can clarify real quick about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle book. If they're a subscriber, that just gets them the regular copy that they're subscribed to. But for our exclusive variant, they have to request that separately, right? That's correct. Yeah, if they're subscribers to the Turtle book, they'll normally get that in their box, as always. And if they want this as an addition, that's exactly what it would be. So nine ninety nine. Then we're going to put together some packages as well as we get closer. So some fun stuff. We have some... Some access to one and tens that we'll put yep. together for people. So Different. we'll take care of you, but thank you very much. Appreciate Different the questions. Yep. All right, let's keep on going. A3, please, after Superman. This is another copy of What If. This I actually read this one. This is pretty cool. What If Secret Invasion by Leonel Yu and Gabrielle Delato giving us the cover of this one. This one shot's from 2010. It's Near Mint, Near Mint Plus. So What If Secret Invasion was not thwarted, basically, is this one. Really cool. It flips the, flips the script a bit, and a lot of fun to see the Skrull Queen. Above Osborne. Later on, you're going to have to sum that up for me. Let me know. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Happens, yeah. A4. We have Marlon uh, Maya for A2. Marlon, first timer. All right, awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Marlon. Marlon, Marlon, Marlon Pahea. Yeah. Marlon's been on before. Thanks, bud. Right. So, it's going to be A4. A4 is a two pack. It is a copy of Fantastic Four issue 250. So, you get two copies of it. Oh. You get both the newsstand and the regular edition. So, newsstand will be on your right, and the one on the left will be the direct edition. 2X set by Mr. John Byrne from 1983. Very fine plus 
or above is the estimated grade of both of these books. That's you a very the, cool story. I, I remember reading really that off the shelf. The yeah. X-Men in it, Spider-Man's in it, yeah. a little bit of everything, and John Burns illustrating it, so it's pretty cool. There's, the another, Guardian. there's another faction in the story that the cover doesn't give away that makes it super cool. Yeah, check if it out. If you've never read the, the Fantastic Four before, that John Byrne run is a great place to start. Yeah. You don't need a whole lot of backstory, history of it. He picks you right in. The artwork's engaging. It's an outward space story. It's what it's supposed to be. So if you're looking for a Fantastic Four, find the old John Byrne reprints yeah. and read them up. They're awesome. We've got awesome. a nice, nice omnibus that collects all his stuff. Really good the shop stuff. Right now. Really underrated. So you get the new stand in. You get the direct copy for 20 bucks. A5 AG, please. This is a copy of Imix Comics oh. Reaver. Yeah, I, I smuggled this one out of, out of Jake's secret yeah. stash. This is a copy of Reaver number one. This is from a uh, fairly new release. Near Mint, Near Mint Plus is the estimated grade of this book. Image Comics first print sold out out can of the Jake's secret stash for only 10 bucks. Can I sell this real quick? So if you're a Game of Thrones fan, th imagine your favorite Game of Thrones season and all the badasses in it, Littlefinger, Arya, the Mountain, a few others all on one team, and then combine that with the Suicide Squad, and that's what you get. And this thing is awesome. I loved it. Justin Jordan. Yeah. Cool yeah. beans. Yeah, sold out. So second prints coming in? And, and then yeah, yeah we got second prints me? coming that I'm going to hand sell the heck out of. This is my new favorite. This is cable. Series. You can do what you want. <laughs> you can say F uh, if you want. I'm working up to that. All right. I need another couple hey, of drinks. Just making sure. So, Reva, this is a big, big book, only 10 bucks. All right, let's do it. A6. A6. I'm jacked and pumped about, but this is a 3X lot. So these are issues number two, three, and four of the original Spider-Man Noir story. So issue number one is missing. However, these books are all in near mint, near mint plus condition. So really nice copies. Second Spider-Man Noir. So issues second one will be the second, second, third, and fourth. So three issues, 75 bucks. Great deal. David Morgan for A5. A5, five. David Morgan. How you doing, buddy? Enjoy it, David. Seems like a cool book. I'm going to have to get myself one of those. Did you read that one, Matt? Reaver? Did you read that one yet? Reaver. Yeah, the one we just put up. Holy shit. Spider Man Noir. Spider Man Noir. I was Let it be known. Oh, my God. Matt just derailed me. This is B1. <laughs> this is a copy of Catwoman, issue number five. So, fairly new release of this book. Near Mint, Near Mint Plus is the estimated grade of this Art Germ cover B. So, Stanley Art Germ Lau doing the cover B. It's pretty awesome. It becomes. The service was there, Mo. Just B2. The B2. B2 is a copy of Iron Fist number six from 1976. Near Mint is the estimated grade of this nice vintage book, which features white pages, writing by Mr. Chris, Chris Claremont, and art by John Byrne. Who, so they really worked on this, cut their teeth here before they jumped over to Uncanny X-Men. This is where the team up occurs. So it's a copy of Iron Fist number 6, 1976. White pages, really sharp copy of this book, 40 bucks. Guide on, it's 55. B3. B3 is a copy of Guardians of the Galaxy, issue number seven. So a fairly recent release, Near Mint. Near Mint Plus is the estimated grade of this Giuseppe Comicoli carnage-sized variant. So we got Groot and Rocket as carnage-sized characters. I can't believe that word works, carnage-sized. So th this issue works. is the beginning of the much-talked-about Death of Rocket storyline that Donny Cates just kicked off in Guardians. Oh, we're going to kill a... Really? Well, that's what uh, the title is. That uh, doesn't... Uh, that's, that could be right. misleading. Right. We'll see. All right, all right, moving on. B4. Help me out with this beautiful copy of Teen Titans number 12 from 1967. Fine, fine. Plus is the estimated grade of this book, which features an awesome Nick Cardi cover. So the, new, the original Teen Titans in space, beautiful black cover, squared off, square books, really nice. Number 12, 1967, fine, fine. Plus only 20 bucks. Another one below guide. B5, please, Mr. A.G. B5 is a biggie. This is a copy of Silver Surfer Black number two. This is the variant cover, the 1 in 25 Marcos Martini variant. This uh, is a near mint, near mint copy of that book. First appearance of the Void Knight. So it looks like a brand new character from Johnny Cates joining the Marvel Cosmic. Near mint, near mint plus issue number two, 40 bucks. Super hot book. Carrie Jansen for B4. B Super hot. B4 to <laughs> carry. Yeah, that's a smart pickup. It's a great book. Tina King for B2. B2 to Tina. Oh, it's a nice silver set. Uh, she's uh, Iron Man. She's starting to get the... Uh, Tina's starting to fill it in. That's good. She's going to hit bingo. 
Oh, that's a bingo. <laughs> <All right. laughs> B6. B6, please. Thank you, Jake. I appreciate that. Amazing Spider-Man Annual number 13 from 1979. Very fine plus or above is the estimated condition of this book, which features white pages, pencils by Mr. John Byrne, and inks by the always fantastic Terry Austin. 1979, very fine plus or above. It's a great copy of this book for only 15 bucks. That's cool. it. With Woo. two minutes and 14 Woo. seconds left, that. it's your chance. That's Spider-Man Noir set. Don't sleep on that. I know it says 75, but that thing is really crazy and tough to find. Okay. That was a beautiful cover. Well, I finally saw Spider-Verse this weekend and Tina thought it was King really cool. Just I love Tina it. I King for B5. Really cool. I agree. I uh, it was that. by nice far job. away. Nice book. Carrie Jansen for B6. And B6 like for Carrie Jansen? Spider-Man's not my overall favorite, but that was it's a okay. good movie. You can say that. Really me, yeah. The first like five minutes takes a little bit to adjust to the animation, but after that, it's awesome. Yeah, it's All awesome. right, folks, real quick, I got a minute and a half left. Let's run through them here in A3. What if Secret Invasion? That's a one shot from 2010, just eight dollars. Near mint, near mint plus condition with a Gabriel Delato cover featuring Norman Osborn and the Scroll Queen. Very cool. John Byrne fans, listen up. In A4, it's a two-pack of Fantastic Four, number 250, one of my favorite classic issues. You get the newsstand and the regular edition for just $20. That's made to be in very fine plus or better condition. And we've got just over a minute left. As John was just touting, the A6 spot is a very cool Spider-Man Noir set. You get issues 2, 3, and 4 for just $75. Look it up. That's the choke out the person that took the one. Yeah, find that guy. Uh, so that's a... Concludes the second appearance of Spider-Man Noir. Those are all estimated to be in near mint or better condition. Can you with A3, again, please? A3 is uh, What If Secret Invasion Story. It's a one-shot from 2010. It's pretty cool. Uh, is that written by Bendis? Uh, I'm not sure. So it's a near mint, near mint plus condition for just $8. I like that Guardians cover. So it imagines, what is it, John? It imagines that the what if Secret Invasion yeah, had been had been followed through with. So oh. the so Norman Osborn doesn't kill the Skrull Queen. She okay. she actually triumphs, and this is the new society. Pretty cool. Okay. Pretty cool stuff. Yeah, looks neat. John read it. He liked it. Loved it. What do we got? Oh, cover on B1 again. B1 is Catwoman B cover oh, of an issue. That's art germ, yeah. Yeah, issue number five, just eight dollars for that very cool art germ cover. Oh, yep. Love them, yeah. Sexy eyes. So we're almost done with round number four. <laughs> what? <laughs> all right, we just said the eyes are cool. We didn't go that. I was going yeah, deep. I, That's all right. Like I like it. Eyes, I just the hair. Let yeah. me touch oh, it. So pretty. All right. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Hit my car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's hysterical. All right. Susan's <laughs> exactly. up. That's all like I'm going to say. And you just let the cat out of the bag. Good job. All right. I know. He's. We're not taking him on a heist. He's not on my Good oceans. Good job on that one. He Jake. is. He is not he in my oceans eleven fish. <laughs> <laughs> so Harley D is joining us. She's a supporter of the shop and friend of the store. And we haven't had a pimp your comics round in a while. I thought that'd be a good opportunity, especially with your uh, inclination and leaning towards DC, especially your favorite character. Harley. My favorite character being Harley, and especially with uh, just the announcement coming out at San Diego that the Harley Quinn cartoons coming out. She's getting a cartoon and a movie, right? And a, got a movie, movie coming yep. Are you excited about that as a fan? Of or? course I am. Of course yeah. I am. Did yeah. you like Suicide Squad? Oh, come on. That's like so mean to ask. Really? You, you didn't like it? Oh, all right. No. No? Didn't. Okay. All right. That's I cool. like parts of it. So you haven't had so a depiction like of... Two-thirds of it? I liked, <laughs> yeah, the beginning part. And I, I don't... I think Margot Robbie is a great actress. I think it was chopped up and she had a terrible script. I would agree. I would yeah. agree with that. Yeah. 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 Okay, so that's tough. So that's so my take on so it. So you've yet to get the, the, the movie version of Harley that you're waiting for. So hopefully that happens and is it with uh, Harley and Poison Ivy and Supposedly, but again this is all DC teaming up. universe, so who knows when and if Well and I guess it's <laughs> is it time to get made, right? No one's getting made. The Margot Robbie new yeah, is it yeah, yeah, it is. But I still I'm proper... holding my breath. Okay. Holding my breath. Yeah. yeah. So pretty yeah, cool. So it. for those first time through, what what's the old pimp your comics? What we do is we invite in a supporter of the shop, and he or she can put forth some books that we try to pick out and create around with. So the proceeds will go to uh, Miss Harley D. So she's selling her own books here. I am so selling my own books. Some, some support, and they're going to go There's straight back into stuff. buying some better books. So That's what I love about it. <laughs> I love it. Circle of life. Circle of life. <laughs> amen. Can I get an amen? 
So this is going to be presented by Miss Holly D. These are all your books and some, some cool stuff in here. These are all straight out of my boxes. Ooh, so let's yes, do it. absolutely. Let's go. Ready, rock and roll. We are ready to go. Right to the line. All right. So A1, we have The Killing Joke. It's a one shot. This is a six printing from 1988. Um, it's near mint and above. It features Batman and Joker, written by Alan Moore, with art by Brian Boland. So this, unfortunately, does not have Harley in it, but it is a very key issue in the Batman-Joker universe. There is. It is. We have people look for all those printings as well. It goes up to an insane amount. I think, it, yeah, it's crazy. 12th print or 13th print. I think the, the, yeah, the first print has the lime green and everything after that is different colors. And then Got you it. take a look on the inside and see what print it was. It's all right. Nice, yeah, really nice copy of, of it. Ready? I am ready to go on A2. We have Action Comics number 765 from the year 2000. It's graded near mint, near mint plus. plus. Um, and this includes a fight between Harley and Mercy. So this is one of these comics that obviously Harley's on the cover, but you don't really realize that she's in it if you're trying to build up that collection. Yeah, it's an oddball Harley Quinn appearance. She Very pops much. up in different titles and... So people are randomly all over the place. Like yourself, you're a completist, right? You had that mom. I am. I'm working on getting every single Harley issue that ever was written Here that she's go. in. So she's doing pretty good. There's too. thousands of them. So these are duplicates in some cases. Yes, exactly. A three. A three. Batman and Danger Girl. This is a one shot, hard to find Harley appearance from 2004. Um, it is rated at near mint, what near mint minus and above, um, and it's about Danger Girl coming to Gotham City. In a 48-page yeah. special. And you get the Joker as well. It's pretty cool. Flipped on through it and checked it out. It's a pretty cool book. But low print run. Lionel Yu provided the cover and the interior artwork. So pretty hot name. And Andy Hartwell, I believe, did the writing. So it's a cool little team up. Plus you get a Harley Quinn appearance. Mm-hmm. A4. A4. Now this is not DC, not Harley. This is hey a now. Sandman number one. Woo. So, yes. Uh, rare. Technically it is DC. Yeah, this is. Well, DC. yeah, this is technically DC. DC. Vert, vertigo. All right, way to school me. Thanks. Both are accepted by Alex. Um, I'm a Sandman is my number one all time. I love Sandman. Sandman was one of the first comics I ever read. Sandman and Strangers in Paradise. So, this is a number one. Um, it's from 1989. It's very fine, very fine minus. Written by the amazing Neil Gaiman with art by Dave McKeon. Uh, it includes the first Morpheus, um, the modern age Sandman, and Wesley Dodds. The Golden Age Sandman actually has a cameo appearance in it. So awesome. this is a great comic at a good price. Seven All right, A5. I know. Sandman is on Netflix. Here we go. We have Gotham Academy number one from 2014. This is Near Mint and Above, a first print. Um, it's the first appearance of Gotham Academy Soldier Crew. Um, it was written by Becky Cloonan and Brendan Fletcher. Just a fun comic, easy read, nice to flip through. Cool. Cool art. It's kind of like watching an animated show. Yeah. Have, have yeah, they not translated very... this yet to any medium? No, I'm this would be a great. Mm, no, it'd be great as a cartoon. Perfect. Yeah. In that style, too, with Becky Clunes writing. It's pretty yep. cool. Awesome. All right. A6. This is a Harrow County 2 book set. It's the first and second printing. First and second print. Mm -hmm. Nice. So you get both of them together. This is originally written by Cullen Bunn, um, art by <laughs> Tyler Crook and Owen, was it Gianni? Gianni? Gianni. Gianni, thank you. Uh, this had won a few awards back in 2016. It was nominated for the Eisner Awards, and it won for Best Ongoing Title, Best Writer, Best Artist for the Gasly Awards. It has finished its run, but it's definitely worth a read. That's one that's been optioned yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a cool, is it optioned? Cool ghost story, Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. A4, Mr. Jansen. Oh, oh, look at oh wow. carry oh, a man after my own heart. It's the Sandman. <laughs> awesome. Ah, coming around the corner. All right, here we go. B1. We have Batgirl Adventures number one from 1988. This is near mint, near mint minus and above. Uh, this was a special one shot starring Barbara Gordon as Batgirl. Um, and Poison Ivy got captured by mobsters. Harley Quinn helped out. So there is a great appearance of Harley They're in this in one. Yes, they are. So this is a fun one to have and a good read. All right. B2. Get through all these in 10 minutes. No pressure. First time. Right there, you got Ooh. it. You're actually ahead of the game. <laughs> Take a breath. It's Batman. Shadow of the Bat. Number 93 from uh, 2000. This is near mint. Near mint above. Um, this is written by Greg Rucka, art by Paul Ryan and Bill Sinkiewicz. The late, great Paul Ryan. Mm -hmm. 
good stuff. But another Holly appearance you don't usually see. It's not one that's no. immediate on people's radar. So she's got to cover, too. you got to dig for it, yep. Yeah, she's got to cover, too, so. Yeah, and I love her. She's got the traditional outfit on it, so. Pretty cool. No no, no Suicide Squad, uh -oh, pink and blue. There it is. <laughs> Uh, she's good. A what? An eight pack. Yeah. I know. She's she cutting cut that. <laughs> Look at those thighs. Jeez. She committed to she's the bull flex. Thighs. <laughs> she committed. All right. B3. This is Dark Knight DK3 Master Race number one. Now, this is signed by J. Scott Campbell himself. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. It's pretty cool. Um, it's his exclusive variant. It has a COA and it's sealed you can flip it around and take a look the coa is on the back still sealed. in mylar still sealed still never sealed. opened did you say it was sealed I, is it sealed make sure you tell it, them it's it sealed. sealed is it sealed so it's never been opened never okay been opened. so that's a gorgeous cover it's a beautiful yeah. cover i actually picked this up at uh boston comic-con i think in 2017. Awesome. Cool jay book. scott didn't show but i did get it from him because he still had the shook him down did you he was there they were he he wasn't the there, but he was there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shake so this like is a rug. beautiful oh, cover. Yeah. All right. Before we have Batman five seventy. This is the second Harley appearance in the DC universe mm. um, from nineteen ninety nine. It's a tough one to find. This is a very tough one to find. Uh, near mint, near mint minus. Um, and so this is actually part of a two book run. You have 570 and 571, but we have just 570 here for you guys. You can go and hunt 571 on your own. <laughs> Good luck. Hey, listen. We code. We're not going to give it to you. You got you to gotta work, work for it. Here we go. No <laughs> man's land. Nothing it is. Life is free. Nothing from life is free. That's one of the and hardest, this one's 20. hardest story arcs to complete is No Man's Land. If you ever try to do Batman fans to try to complete No oh, Man's yeah, Land, it's, it's crazy. It's a huge puzzle. It's you gave tough. up? It's a tough one. Uh, You're just, weak. Uh, weak. I was just... It Don't give there, up. Don't it, surrender. There, there wasn't enough draw for me to just get the rest of it. <sighs> Batman No Man's uh, Land, Jim tough Harry one to find. B4. Before Jim Harry, uh, you know stuff on it's in Mylar no and everything. That's a nice ones. one. No, before B three. All right, yeah, B five. B five. Oh, this is one of my favorites. Batman Adventures Mad Love Special One Shot from 1994. This is very fine or above, and it features the origin of Harley Quinn. So the story was by Paul Dini and art by Bruce Tim, and it was the first printing. So and it's a pretty controversial origin as we look back on it. The now when we look at it, absolutely, yeah, yeah it's kind of kind of weird at the time. We didn't see it, but but her, yeah, her, she's pretty abusive and pretty forthright in this. So yeah, Mad Love first prints the first time we get her origin. It's a great copy. You square bound. Black cover. Yep. Really sharp. Very well taken yeah, care of. Format for A6. A6, Adam. Hey, Adam. A two pack of Harrow County. The second print's really tough to find. Yeah, I've never seen it. I know. Scarce. There's a good one. Mm -hmm. B6. B6. Oh, we have, good. again, a two book lot on this one. So we're, we're helping you out. We got Catwoman 83 and 84 from the year 2000. It's near mint minus and above. It, they're both Harley appearances in both of these. So Catwoman teams up with deadly company, Harley Quinn, um, that mistress of mayhem. Mistress of mayhem. <laughs> mistress of mayhem in this one. So, and number 84 also marks the end of Catwoman as you know her, as the story heads off in a direction that nobody was expecting originally. Yeah, changed her back again. So mm -hmm. this was the original Jim Ballant run it coming to an end, this 83. And Pretty she's good cutting stuff. this one too. Catwoman, yeah. She's <laughs> tell you, she's been she's been pumping. She's been pumping. So, good day. You want to run through them one more time? Yeah, About let's run. Twenty seconds left. Oh, 20 seconds. All right. Harley D. Minute Jeez. Minute Jeez. Hour and a half. All right. So we'll pick out number one. We got the Killing Joke number one. First shot. This was a six print. Uh, A2. We have Action Comics seven. Action Comics seven sixty five from two thousand. Near Mint Near Mint Plus. A3 was Batman and Danger Girl, uh, from two thousand. That's, an, that's also a hard to find Harley appearance, right? That is very much so. Um, A5, we have Gotham Academy's number one. This is a first print. Uh, we have A6 was purchased. So we have B1, Batgirl Adventures number one from 88. A2 from Michael Thompson. Oh, Thompson, yay. A2, that's, I love that Superman action comics one. Yeah. B2, Batman. B5. B5? Oh, Aww. Aww. the mad love. All right, so what we got left? We got B2, Batman Shadow of the Bat, number 93 from 2000, near mint or above. 
uh, D3 was that awesome J. Scott Campbell signed DK3 with that was, was sealed, right? Sealed. It was sealed, sealed, right, with the COA. Totally sealed. <laughs> and B6, Catwoman, number 83 and 84, a two book lot near Mint Minus wow. and above. That might have been, job. that was awesome. Great job. That might have been, been, been the best Pimp My Comic that round that ever. Great job. I am an Orange Nails. Die Hard Man. Paper Comics. So second chance Die opportunities on any of those books that you see. You may want to pick them up later on. Send us a note. Great job. Hours. Thank you very I'm much. Yeah. Right, it's probably yeah. our best Pimp My Comics it. round yet. So anyone's interested in doing this, feel free to shoot us a note here at the Hall of Comics at oh gmail.com. Let Jake know you want to Pimp Me Comics and we'll yeah. certainly consider it and bring you out and we'll tell you all, all about it. But always happy to help those that help us. So thank you very much. Great job. Oh, no problem. Are you going to hang out with us? Of course I'm going to hang out with All you right. guys. I can't give you as much crap as well. That was awesome. Great job. Thanks, everyone, for the support of that. We're going to reset the board again. Yeah, exactly. We're going to come fun. back with round six. Awesome job. That was pretty cool. Yeah, well done. Got some great books Excellent. still, too. So, Jake, this is uh, in between us. Yeah, just a little reminder here. If you're tuning in late, you missed our opening Wait, salvo. You it's a uh, good time to remind you of how this whole thing happens, how it works. If you've been paying attention, you probably noticed that it is a Claim It Now auction Thank with you. fixed prices. And as we reveal the books one at a time in each round, the way that you would claim a book is you say in the live comments on this feed, I claim... And you use the letter and number code to identify the book. A1 through A6 in the top row. B1 through B6 in the bottom row. First person we see at our end, specifically on Ryan's screen, the first person we see in our feed is announced as the winner. And I can vouch for Ryan. He's being fair. Ryan is, not, is, is. nothing if not fair. That's but why you don't hear Ryan much First because one he's, no, he's, he's focused, stressed out. keeping a low he's, pro. He's just he's good at his job and he's paying attention to what's going on over there. So we, uh, what we, if you are a successful claimer, then what happens is Ryan will send you an invoice, uh, probably before noon on Tuesday, but anyway, sometime on Tuesday. And we do ask that you pay by 6 p.m. on Wednesday. That is the deadline, and that also gets you entered into the weekly raffle as long as you pay by that 6 p.m. on Wednesday deadline. And then we do uh, the sure. raffle drawing in a live video on this me. very page shortly after that on Wednesday. This week's raffle prize is a, it's a twofer. You get a signed copy of Road of Bones number one from IDW, the current horror series they've got going on. The artist Alex Cormack was nice enough to sign a copy for us, so we're giving away one of those as well as a Road of Bones print also signed by Alex. So the winner will get both of those in this week's raffle drawing. So we're just about ready to kick off round number six of ten rounds. Total of ten rounds this evening. It's going to be tough to follow Harley D after that. Yeah. That was pretty fantastic. You Let's do it. First time. You did. Go for John's going to give it a shot. This is round number six. I'm going to do my best. A1. Start now with a full 6X set. So 6X, please, if you would, my good sir. These are copies of Man of Steel, issues number one, two, three, four, five, and six. So all six, featuring white pages, writing, and artwork by the great John Byrne. Near Mint, Near Mint Minus is the estimated grade of all of these in this set. $20. One of my favorite runs. I was so jacked when I read that. Such a great story. Changed it. So volume two is the beginning of volume two. Very, some very cool, memorable moments in that whole series there. Great stuff. Changed comics. Yep. Right? When they re, they readjusted the Man of Steel, they did it yeah. to Wonder Woman, they did it to Flash, and decided to retcon him. A2. A2 is a copy of What If General Ross Became the Hulk. So this is a classic cover swipe. Can take a look at it. First appearance of the Hulk. So this is a one-shot from 2005. Near Mint, Near Mint or Above is the estimated grade in this one. So it could be Near Mint, Near Mint Plus. So we estimate 10 bucks. It's one of those tough to find one shots. Stands on its own. Before you became Red Hulk? That was before Red Hulk, yes. Yeah, so that would be 2005. Yeah. Looks like it's written by Peter David. And it is written by Mr. Peter David. So near and above, $10. A3, please, sir. This is a copy of DC Comics Legionnaires, issue number seven. This is from 1993. This book is estimated to be in near mint or above condition. This features an Adam Hughes cover before he was Adam Hughes. This is from 1993, $8. So those Adam Hughes completionists, there you go. Pretty cool stuff. Who would have thought, right? 
DC Legionnaires, Adam Hughes. That's what I thought. A4. All day. This is a copy of Alpha Flight Issue 1 from 1983. Near Mint, Near Mint or Above is the estimated grade of this book, which features white pages. It is done by, written and drawn with a cover by the great John Byrne. Features the first appearance of the characters Puck and Mariana. You must have a soft spot for Mariana being a uh, somewhat. I got a soft spot character. for all of Alpha Flight. I love this series. Pretty cool stuff. And the cover's yep. awesome. Yep. Check out Shaman just trying to stiff on people, trying to get through the crowd. It's always one of my <laughs> favorites. A5. He's kind of like trumping it up. Yeah, he's like <laughs> just goon squadding it. Here's a copy of Dazzler. Dazzler. No, forward. This is a copy of Dazzler, issue 24 from 1983. Near Mint, Near Mint or Above is the estimated grade of this book, which features a white pages and an appearance by Rogue, and a costume oh. is just not humanly possible. See, Jake, I thought that was more of your style than the pink, fluffy <laughs> unicorn outfit. Uh, a little you know, dazzler. You catch me on the right time. I love the dazzler. Yeah. Roller right skates there. and all. Yeah. Impressive. Yeah. Issue number 24 from 1983. <laughs> near mint, near mint or above. <laughs> White pages. What an appearance by the rogue. Dr. Not Fish. Right. Eight, five. Eight five, Dr. Fish. <laughs> Thanks, Dr. Fish. Get that thing out of here. The dazzler. <laughs> that look cool. I love Allison Blair, the dazzler. We should print out, like, Jake's face and just put them oh, on. Oh, wow. Them. Yeah, we tried to do that once, but... Wow. Copyright <laughs> issues. A6. This is why we don't do print my comics. A6 <laughs> is a 3X uh, full set. Excuse me. This is a 3X set of a book called Witchcraft. This was done by DC Vertigo, the now-defunct Vertigo. This full 3X set was written by the great James Robinson and features covers by Mike Kaluta. <laughs> so pretty cool stuff. Near Mint, Near Mint, Minus, or Above is the estimated grade. So all three, only 15 bucks. DC Vertigo. If Mike I was Kaluta. not here, I'd be on that. You like said, white on so rice. look on your phone. AG's actually bought it before through his phone. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, you, so you got to be fair about the delay. Yeah, you you said James you Robinson, Robinson right? James Robinson. Who yeah, wrote Starman. Wrote Starman. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Really oh, cool yeah, stuff. So he was on that 3X set. Yeah, so somebody ought to buy that. Too. I'd never seen I that know, series before. Buy it. If somebody <laughs> doesn't cool. claim it, I'll get it at my second chance. We're coming around the mountain. B1. Six minutes. I'm going to this. I'm fair. I don't want to be rude and... And bid from here. I would. I know. <laughs> There's a copy I of know, Star Wars. But it's already delayed. I don't want to be mean. Tina King creates it. See? Oh, it see? went to another comic fan. That's all right, Tina. Tina King. <laughs> Mirror Universe. Yeah, yeah. Mirror Universe. A6. All right. So this B1. one back here to B1 is a 3X, excuse me, a 6X lot. Both second prints. So all reprintings of Marvel Star Wars. Issues 1, 2, 3, 4. Four, five, and six. So all six issues from 1977. Very fine or above is the estimated grade of each of these books. Sixty bucks. Yeah, the old reprinters, Marvel. Pretty cool stuff. Huh. One through six. Yeah, nice condition. I know they're pretty cool. I just love that cover. And then when you saw the movies, like, well, what the hell's going on with this gorilla face Chewbacca thing? It doesn't look nothing like him. <laughs> <laughs> Obi Wan clearing sure house. Yeah, he gets <laughs> nothing. How it's shaking covers though, so great stuff. The green, yeah. Well, I think Marvel, Marvel, Marvel was caught flat-footed too. They didn't put out enough copies of Star Wars the comic book, so they had to go to reprint really quick, which wasn't a usual thing back then. Yep. Right. They didn't go to reprint much. It wasn't that much of a demand for them, so it's probably one of the first ones that was reprinted and put back out. So these are the first six issues. Are you impressed with that, Ryan? Apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you not the kid's like Alexa. He's like Alexa. You just say one word to him. He's like, what? <laughs> B2. B2 is a copy of Electra issue 13 from 2002. Near Mint, Near Mint Plus is the estimated grade of this book, which features a pretty awesome Greg Horn cover. Again. Alexa. Uh, Alexa. Uh, Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> Alexa, can you turn the channel? Uh -huh. I'm sorry. This is Greg Horn cover. Did, did I say Greg on? Eight bucks, B3. It's a great book. This one's pretty awesome. There's a copy of Marvel 2-in-1 Annual, issue number one from 1976. Very fine or above is the estimated grade of this book, which features an awesome Jack Kirby cover and the thing somehow getting back to World War II. The Liberty just, Legion. Just pointing out on B2, I love how you strategically put the eight dollars in the upper right hand corner not to cover the most important part of the cover. Absolutely the not. Left. Exactly. Right. Right. That's, oh, okay. That's snake. That's so yeah, if I didn't snake. give that, yeah, 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 I wanted to make sure you could yeah, see yeah. it. John yeah. Collins for B2. <laughs> B2 to John, John Collins. Snake. Matthew. <laughs> Yeah, Matthew, what do you got for the You need to scan the barcode. John Collins, yeah, of course. Of course. You'll never walk along, John Collins. B4. 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 Now we're getting sticker placement. 
Iron Man issue 125, very fine, very fine, <laughs> plus is the estimated grade of this book, which is a newsstand copy and features a pretty awesome cover by Mr. Bob Layton. This book also features an early Scott Lang appearance, who obviously is the Ant-Man, and it's also uh, in the time of Demon in a Bottle. So you start to see that Demon in a Bottle iconic cover. It's actually the start of a story. This is part of that Demon in a Bottle story. It's like Tony Stark, International Man of Mystery. It's a pretty interesting story if you've never read it, but it's a great Bob Layton cover. I think he does a writing in the inks as well. 20 bucks. Scott Lang, Ant-Man. Let's do it. B5. B5 is a copy of Thor, issue number 373 from 1986. This book is estimated to be in near mint or above condition. Features a Walt Simonson cover as well as his writing and is in the 25th anniversary frame. So they did that mantle. Yeah, they're all pretty cool and we're going to see those coming back shortly yeah. here as we get ready for another. It's pretty crazy. It was only 25 years back then. It seems, doesn't seem possible. So 1986 is the uh, year for this one. Near it or above? B5. B5, B5 Scott. to Scott Mercier. Nice book. I love the frames and the Walt Simonson covers killer. So the last one for this round, if you would, my friend, is a 4X lot of a book that was put out by Keen Spot. These are called the X Liefelds. So a little bit of a uh, rip on our friend Rob Liefeld. So this is a now sold out, isn't it? This, yep. this whole series. So the story's a pretty cool idea. They took all the sort of real D, E, F level characters that Rob had come up with back in the day and they all sort of gang up on him and uh, take their revenge. So it's a lot of actual Rob Liefeld creations that nobody's ever heard of or maybe forgotten about. How'd they get around that's a good question. Ooh. I knew there was going to be a foot joke there, but yeah, these, these things are sold out. Pretty hot books. And that's it for me. This round number six. All right, so we got a minute and a half left here for round number six. Thank you, John. So let's check it out. What we got still left up on the board in spot A1 is a Man of Steel set for just 20 bucks. You get issues one through six. Of course, this series originally came out in 1986, and these copies have white pages and are in near mint to near mint minus condition. That's a really nice pickup. If you haven't read that, I recommend it. Uh, cool Hulk book in A2. What if General Ross became the Hulk? $10 on that one, so one shot in near mint condition. A3 is a early Adam Hughes cover, Legion Airs, number seven from 1993, in near mint condition or better. Classic Alpha Flight, number one in uh, spot A4. That is in near mint or better condition, just $20. Really cool pickup. B1. B1 is a set of Star Wars reprints you get uh, from 1977. These are all second prints, one, two, three, four, five, and six in very fine condition or better. The Chewbacca Gorilla Face variant? Yep, don't miss that. B3 is a Marvel 2-in-1 classic from 1976 with a Jack Kirby cover. You get the thing with the Liberty Legion, very fine condition or better on that one. Invincible Iron Man is in B4. Invincible Iron Man number 125 in very fine plus to near minus condition. Michael Thompson for B3 and B4. B3 oh, and B4 to Mr. Michael, Michael Thompson. He's making up for lost time. Thank you, Michael. I don't Michael. recall seeing that Marvel 2 on the annual. I this. don't think I've seen that before either. So that was a great so round number six, everybody. Thank you so much. That's Liefeld, baby. Getting ready to set up for round number seven Life coming Life, at you. Round number seven coming up next. How are we doing for time? It's uh, 8.10. Uh, Within the uh, ballpark. If uh, round number seven is next, I think we're doing pretty good. Yeah. All right, yeah. man. I want to stay under two hours. Thanks for tuning Respect in. Every, everybody's time. We appreciate it. Thanks. 120 books in two hours. Not too bad. Where do you see that? Here. At the Where hall. do you see that shit? Two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> True. I was like, what? <laughs> what? So this is the part of the evening where we remind you the powers of X. Number one is coming out this Wednesday. If you were lucky enough to grab a copy of House of X, number one this past Wednesday, <laughs> Powers of X is the follow-up. These two books were written with the intention of being read together, so Jonathan Hickman is writing them both. These two six-issue limited series, they're going to run alongside each other. So each week you'll get a different one that comes out. They're going to come out I'm on a bi-weekly basis. It was good. You, you really should sell this. What is happening? <laughs> we're going to do a live one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and now... Matt's choking. You okay, Mo? Matt's going yeah, down. Okay. He's a dying. Everybody's <laughs> choking out here. So people like join us. Like, what the hell is this <laughs> shit? <laughs> so we've already got. <laughs> like seriously. We've already like, sold out of House shit? of X number one once. We got re uh, reorders coming in <laughs> tomorrow. He does. He's so don't like, miss oh. Powers of X number one before it sells out on you as well. This looks like <laughs> it's going to be 
another big one for us this week. Make yeah, sure how's check it out? I'm not surprised by it. We sold a bunch of them though. It was good. Had yeah. a lot of people coming in, checking, trying to get readers, one. checking it so out. You got, so you got a, so you got another, so you got more orders coming in. You said, yeah, a few. Don't miss them, folks. Though either get in here or yeah, send seriously. us an email or something. Good stuff. And then Powers of X. No midnight release for the Powers of X. Nope. Thanks for the people that joined us. That was a lot of fun for a midnight release. Yeah, last Tuesday. Appreciate you guys coming out, nice and late. Doing great, man. <laughs> Doing great. I'm just trying going. to mess with Jake. All right, let's yeah. do it. I managed to stop him. Hey, what the hell happened to my thing? You gave it to me. I took it. This is my thing. I don't know. Take it. Yeah. I have two copies. Make sure you get the right round. I'll make sure I get the right round here. Seven. Seven. Round number seven. You ready? I'm glad you guys are here to tell me these things. <laughs> All right. A1 is a pretty cool book I don't usually see. This is a copy of Iron Man by Design. This was a one-shot from 2010. Near Mint or Above is the estimated grade of this book, which features a Gerard Perel cover, hot name these days. Also has interior artwork by Gabriel Delato, um, Scotty Young, uh, John Tyler Christopher, Greg Horn, and Adi Granov. So essentially what they did was in honor of Iron Man 2 coming out, they pulled together a book and had these artists illustrate different marks, uh, suits. So it's just pretty cool. The cover itself has got kind of grain to it. It's really interesting. Pretty interesting book. Dug up actually by Ryan. Ryan, this is one of the ones that uh, you highly touted. It's pretty yeah, cool. That one's, that one's really cool. So good stuff. So uh, Perel, who's a super hot artist right now, provided the cover. Near Mint or Above is the es estimated grade of the book. Only 10 bucks. Going to Steve Oliveri. Wow. Steve nice Oliveri. Job. It's pretty cool. Just to, did you see the texture on the book? It's yeah, interesting. No, it's really cool. It. Different. I'm psyched about this one. This is a cool round, man. I'm jacked and pumped about round seven. This is a copy of Detective Comics 675. So they're all copies of the issue 675, but you get three different versions of it. That one there, can you go back to that one quick, AG? The lower left-hand corner has one of those obscure DC Universe logos. So pretty cool stuff and a good, pretty cool chase book. Those were test logos put out in selective cities. So not a lot of these floating around. So six seventy five. So you get the DC, you get the deluxe version. Look at the Asbat costume, just ready to get thrown down. Ha <laughs> ha! He's the man. You notice that? I'm glad you're here to tell you these things. It's the foil deluxe version, and this is the regular edition. And this is why we need the the other point of view. And that's it. <laughs> and things we miss. I didn't want to uh -huh. chop off his legs like Liefeld. So there we go. So you get the three X lot, thirty bucks. Some great stuff. That DC Universe one alone is a big dollar book. A3, please. A3 is a copy of The Wolverine, issue number 48 from 2007. Near Mint or Above is the estimated grade of this book, which features cover and interior artwork by Mr. Humberto Ramos. And this is an epilogue to the Civil War story. So this is Casualties of War. This is the fallout from that and Wolverine's reaction to it. But an awesome Humberto Ramos cover is really what features this one. Eight bucks. Does his skin grow back? He's the Wolverine, right? As long so as he, he can. Automatically yeah, yeah, he'll start in, to replace. In this particular place. thing, he grows back from that. Mm. Pretty cool. So Catch he's, he's still working. He's the Wolverine. Hugh Jackman's unstoppable. A4. A4, this is a 4X story lot. So you got to follow me here with this one. These are copies of Amazing Spider-Man number 544 and 545. And we got, flip that next one, please. We got Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man number 24. And then we get Sensational Spider-Man number 41. The most important takeaway here, folks, is these are the four pieces of the story, One More Aww. Day. The ultra-controversial storyline where Peter Parker makes a deal with Mephisto and changes his reality from being married to Mary Jane. He's completely flipped it. So Marvel Alter. pulled a fast one on everyone. This is basically Alter the piss-off point. May. Yeah, so basically Peter Parker traded in his, his love of his life to save Aunt May's life. He made a deal with Mephisto. So this is the storyline that... Started some pretty big uh, revolts, and it's a pretty interesting read. You should check it out. I don't know, also like the, still only 399 cents. 399, <laughs> but those are so all the covers are pretty stylized too. They you are, flip really them down cool. again, they it's almost like they're trying to tell like a serial. Yeah, it's yeah. really neat. And Doctor yeah. Strange is involved. If you've never read it, it's worth the read. But Joe Casada provided the cover and the interior artwork. That's a great And cover. Michael J. Straczynski was the writer. So completely changed Spider-Man's history as we know it. Just almost snapped it out of existence to yeah. use a but that's all of them really nice shape too 25 bucks a5 a5 is a two-pack got a pretty awesome copy of itchy and scratchy holiday hygiene special number one that's a newsstand copy try coming up with one of those baby 
mm-hmm. newsstand copy, Itchy and Scratchy Comics, Hijinx Special Number One, and also issue number two of the regular issue uh, of Itchy and Scratchy, so the monthly. Both from Bongo Comics, 15 bucks for the pair. Got an itchy scratchy or anyone's feeling itchy and scratchy, there's your chance. Those are really neat. Scratchy I've Rich. Seen those before. Hey, scratch your itch and pick that up. I'll scratch my itch oh, and pick that geez. up. I think right, I was going for my A5, A7, A7. Copy of uh, X23, oh. issue 13 from 2011. Near Mint is the estimated grade of this book, which features an awesome Kalman Andrzejnowski cover. And it has an appearance by the Future Foundation as well. So members of the Fantastic Four and Spider-Man with his white suit. Pretty cool stuff if you don't know who the Future Foundation is. Isn't that Hickman? He came up with them, Future yeah. Foundation, right? Great stuff. If you don't know the Future Foundation, go seek them out. It's awesome. But this is a copy of X-23, number 13, near mint 2011. Ten bucks. I don't think that Spidey suit would work at nighttime. It's a pretty cool one. It's like his space suit. B-1. B1 is a copy of Scout Comics Electric Black, issue number one. Fairly new release for this one. Near Mint, Near Mint Plus is the estimated grade of this first print book, which was sold out. So, pretty super hot book. Electric Black. Anything to add about Electric Black? You're going to save it save, save it for your turn. I'm going to save it for my turn. Tom York? Tom York? <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile... Giant Size Master of Kung Fu. I'm going to give you some Giant Size Master of Kung Fu, Matt. You don't knock it off. Giant Size Master of Kung Fu issue number two from 1974. Very fine, very fine minus for this deluxe edition book featuring Shang-Chi. Titled Death Track for Shang-Chi. I bet she beats them all down. I hope he gets the red, the red, uh, gi. Be awesome. Looking forward nice. to that one. Ready to go, Scott. Double Mercia. Oh, they're probably going like his new Avengers costume. That's my call. That's a good one. Probably right. Susan Donovan for A5. A5 from here. All right. <laughs> Itchy and Scratch. That's pretty cool. And now my, definite, my, my identity is definitely not known. Good yeah, job, Yeah, there it is. Yeah, it's okay. Jake, I already <laughs> blew it. Jake blew it 40 minutes ago. Nobody knows. I'm just no. building off of it. B3. What do we got? Forgot. You didn't see anything. Thanks. This I'm is a copy of Peter that. Parker's Sensational <laughs> Spider-Man <laughs> Annual Number 1 from 1979. Very fine is the estimated grade of this book, which features the death of Dr. Octopus. Pretty cool stuff. Giant Size Annual Peter Parker Number 1, 1979. Very fine, only 15 bucks. Such a like bargain. Isn't is that the 3PO thing where everything's gold except for the one arm? Exactly. That's, that's when he upgrades, man. Autos, man. He's, he's got some cash. He gold-plated it all. B4. It's a copy of Thor, issue number one. They're sensing a theme here tonight. Thor, issue number one from 2014. Near Mint is the estimated grade of this book, which features James Foster's first appearance as Thor, and it is a Newbery Comics variant by the cover by the great John Tyler Christopher. You get the little guy. Kills it. Yeah. Pretty awesome. So, a really hot book. So, Thor, number one, 2014, Near Mint. First Jane Foster as Thor. B3, Michael Thompson finds himself a king size annual. Peter Parker. Parker. B5, please. Two minutes left. This is a copy of Legion of Superheroes, issue number 37 from 1987. This is estimated to be in near mint and above condition. This is the death of the Silver Age Superboy. So this is after the old crisis. We're cleaning it all up. This is what you get. You get the death of the Silver Age Superboy here in Legion of Superheroes 37. I believe the volume ticks down. I think the next issue is the last issue. So the penultimate issue of this volume, the death of Superboy. Ten bucks. Six is a 3X lot. Last one in this round is a copy of Spawn issue number 298. So fairly new release. Near Mint, Near Mint Plus. So in this 3X lot, you get the Virgin cover, the Sketch cover, and the regular cover. All by Todd McFarlane, who is homaging Spider-Man 298. Which he did. So Which he did, so he's Todd homaging Todd. Yep. So he's, he's reached uh, he's reached Neil. Neil level. Status. Neil yep. doing Very, Neil. This is Todd doing Todd. Very Ken metal. Paris. Virgin Paris. sketch and regular cover. What's the name? Ken Paris. Ken Paris? Yep. What did Ken Paris get? Hey, B6. B6, Ken, thanks, buddy. 3X lot. Nice deal. B5. B5, Michael gets the death of the Silver Age Superboy. 
I just think he's buying it for that cool Monel cover. That's a really cool cover. Isn't it pretty awesome? Yeah. Monel, Death of the Celebration Boy. So that's it, Jake. You have 51 seconds. Show me what you can do. Go. Well, let's take a look here in spot <laughs> A3. I'd say check <laughs> out Wolverine, number 48 from 2007 for just eight bucks because it wraps up the end of the, what did you say, John, the Civil War storyline? So Civil, yep. Sounds like a good, uh, good one to check out. Another good one over there in A6 is X23, number 13 from 2011, mm -hmm. Nearman Condition. Uh, very cool X23 book for just 10 bucks, And for you Bronze Age fans, or excuse me, but yeah, Bronze Age down there in B2. Giant Size, matter, uh, Master of Kung Fu, number two. That's the Giant Size number two, Master of Kung Fu from 1974. Very fine, a very fine minus condition for only $20. Uh, don't pass up that Thor number one. Thor is on fire right now, and that Newberry Comics variant would be a great way to go. Cover art by John Tyler Christopher. Just $45 and a near mint condition. All right, so that is the end of round number seven. Thanks, everybody. Ooh, we're pushing it. Just three rounds left to go, eight, nine, Susan and ten. Donovan for A4. Ah. Susan Donovan's picking up A4. And Mike Weaver for A6. Those are really cool covers. Mike Weaver's picking really, up really A6. Cool and Michael B2. B2 to this Michael Thompson. The artwork, though, because that is artwork. Great it's job, everybody. That, yeah, I'm not, and again, I'm not a huge Spider Man fan, but I do love the whole Spider Man Mary Jane thing, so. So that was some last-minute really action good. there. Nicely done, everybody. Michael Thompson got that giant size Master of Kung Fu in B2. Michael Weaver picking up that X-23 book like I su suspected he might. I mean, hoped he might. <laughs> and uh, certain Mrs. Donovan, Ms. Donovan, what would you pick up there? What was that? I got the Spider-Man. One more day. One more oh, day interesting. Run. Interesting. And then the itchy and scratchy. You'll have to let us know what you think of that. Oh, I yes. Will. The itchy and scratchy. The itchy and scratchy is for my son. He so just coming got up into next. The Simpsons and he loves itchy and scratchy. Awesome. Like, yep, that's my kid. <laughs> itchy and scratchy kid. <laughs> Round number eight is coming up that next. Must, you know, that must take a lot to submit that, Susan. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> my kid's a Pokemon kid. No, my kid is my twisted sense of humor. Except, uh, except he's 21. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I love Pokemon. There's nothing wrong with Pokemon. Did you see yeah. Detective Pikachu? It was adorable. Yeah, I do. I have a Pokemon on my back shoulder. I know it sounds weird, but... I got a Pikachu for Matt. That's what I used to call him so when he was younger. Aww, can we call you Pikachu now? Pika. You say, yeah. Now it's and now you're never gonna move on. So now it's hey, yeah. <laughs> it used to be Pikachu, now it's fucking Matt. <laughs> now it's back to Pikachu. <laughs> now it's Pikachu. <laughs> go ahead, Jake. I'm sorry. Did you tell no, us about no, the shot before ways? No, nope, we're all set. Dad. You already did it? Yep. Did you really? I missed did it. You, you miss it? You do a great job at that usually. I'm sorry, I missed it. It was awesome. So you talked about the shop, the yep. online really? I did. I missed it. Sorry, dude. He went into salesman mode. You missed it. Did he? Was he, he in auto? He went straight into game He's good. mode. I almost want to skip eight to go to nine, but it's too late for us. Well, eight's got. Oh, let's do it. There's a lot of good stuff in eight. I know. I just missed the page. I just overshot it. Let's You're do good? it. Yeah, right. I'm great. I got it. Round eight. I'm ready to go. A one. All right. I'm jacked and pumped to present the Son of Satan number two from 1976. Very fine. Plus is the estimated grade of this book, which features white to off white pages. Always awesome to see the son of Satan, Damien Hellstrom. Not here on Earth or in my dreams, but in the book form. And he's coming to Hulu. Oh, Damien Lucy. Hellstrom and his sister is coming as well. What's his sister's Lucy? name? Zatan. Zatan. Lucy. Lucy? Her? <laughs> I thought to Dracula Lucy. I don't know where he's going with that. I don't know <laughs> what the hell you're talking about. This is a copy of Hulk Winter Guy. This is a pretty cool one shot from 2010. Near Mint or Above is the estimated grade of this book. Looking which features a Russian team. Pretty cool stuff. So a Russian team of characters. You get the death of the original Crimson Dynamo, who is Boris Vadim. And then you get the new Crimson Ty Dynamo, who is Galina Nemrovsky. Nemrovsky. That could be another book <laughs> 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 I should film this. I you just looked better, at Jake. You took he a looked at me like... <laughs> you took a better shot at it than I would have. Oh, my God. <laughs> I wouldn't have gotten that. That was close. awesome. Okay. So first new Crimson Dynamo, near mint, near mint or above. So great Russian superhero team along with the Hulk, Hulk Winter Guy. What do you got? And who keep making an appearance in the new Avengers book? Oh yeah, that's true. Nice AG. Crimson Dynamo. Adding value. Let's do it. A three. Josh Allen's grade two. Grade two to Josh Allen. Josh, good pickup. 
Yeah, The Hobbit, this is a 2X lot. We're missing one of the issues. We have issues one and two. We're missing number three. This was an epic comic runs put out in 1989. Square bound format. Really cool. This is really cool. Somebody's going to grab that. I'll get it at the end. Awesome. First Prince, David Wetzel provided the artwork, which is all painted. So this yeah. is issues number That's one and two really of three. Cool. So you got to go out and ferret out number three. Both of them in near mint or yeah. above condition. 20 bucks for the pair. Pretty awesome. That is I so the, that the was post Ralph Ralph Beck uh, Bachi. Um, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. artwork for his. No. Yeah. A four. A four. Another one of those tie-in. This is Amazing Spider-Man. This is a one-shot from 2010 called Doc Rain the List. This is in near mint or above condition. Written by the great Dan Slott and features an appearance by one of my favorites, the Doc Avengers. So led by Norman Osborn in the Iron Patriot costume. Pretty cool stuff. All right, A5. A5. I'm trying to listen in on what those monkeys are talking about over there. This is a copy of New Mutants, issue number two from 1983. Nairman, Nairman, plus the estimated grade of this book, which features white pages, the third appearance of the New Mutants as a team. It's written by the great Chris Camont and features the first appearance of the Sentinels Mark V. There's a lot going on in this friggin' book for only 15 bucks. What's up there, Bob? Those are the ones in Days of Future Past, weren't they? Correct. Yep, the final Mark Fives. So there you go, AG. AG's rocking it. A6 is a 6X lot. I hope I put this sticker in the right place. Um, these are copies of Vampirella, issue number one. All are est estimated to be in near mint, near mint plus condition. The first one was a, an Archerm cover. There we go. That would be a cover O oh, for Archerm. That was a 1 in 15. That's a Frank Cho cover. We get a copy of an Alex Ross cover. We get a Joe Gisco cover. We get the cosplay cover. And then finally, we get an awesome Adam Hughes cover. Wow. So some fan favorite artists with the great character of Vampirella from Dynamite Comics. So this entire set can be yours. That Frank Cho covers a wraparound. It's a wraparound, Frank Cho, for 35 bucks. It's a great deal. Awesome art room cover. That's in the A6 slot. Keep, keep going. AG, this is a copy of Superman, Lois and Clark, issue number eight from 2016. Near Mint or Above is the estimated grade for this book, which is a first print copy and features the first appearance of John Kent, a.k.a. the new Superboy, who teams up with Damian Wayne to become Super Sons. But the first appearance of John Kent. Pretty cool stuff. First appearance, only 10 bucks. There it is. Bingo. Speaking of first appearances... B2 will bring us a copy of Longshot, issue number one from 1985. Near Mint is the estimated grade of this book, which features artwork and a cover by the great Art Adams. First appearance of the character Longshot himself. First appearance of Magog, Spiral, and Mojoverse. So you got some cool stuff going on here. So his first appearance was in a solo book. First appearance is in a solo book, Longshot. Spiral is badass. Spiral is badass. Pretty cool. She wanted the Mojo Wars. I love Mojo. Mojo's awesome. But Art Adams, the detail he puts in these characters is phenomenal uh, so b2. b2 first long shot thanks lou who's big art adams fan ah there it is art adams artwork always suffered because the quality of the paper wasn't yeah, up to his they, artwork standards his lines were so fine they would bleed but he was still so phenomenal yeah, it didn't really didn't matter, matter. He, o he overcame the bad paper and the printing process b3 is a copy of the actually hard to find conan 154 from 1984 Near Mint, Near Mint Minus is the estimated grade of this book, which is a newsstand copy, again denoted by the lower left-hand corner. What's up with that checkerboard banner? What's up, checkerboard banner? Mm -hmm. Good stuff. This was assist Assistant Editor's Month, too, this book. Remember that Assistant so Editor's Month why. stunt? Yeah, 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 it's yeah. A, just a tough one to find. It wasn't a lot of them printed, so Conan, you're getting those 150. It was, assistant editor's month. It was, it was a gag, the, you know, gag month. Gag stories. Uh, the idea it was sucked. That, yeah, it wasn't. Good. It was supposed to be jokey, and you know, oh, the assistant editor just took over. We screwed up the title uh, for a month. So, <laughs> essentially, <laughs> Thor, Thor Ragnarok in comic book form. Thank you, Matt. Michael Thompson for B3. I love that kid. Dave Thompson. New stand copy. B4 is a copy of that gal, Red Sonya, as my man Joe Baron would say. Joey Baron. This is a uh, copy of issue number one by the great Frank Cho providing the cover. This one, Near Mint, Near Mint Plus, is the estimated grade. See, it's like Pony Red Sun is too pretty there. She needs to be like badass, like just chopping people's heads off and stuff. There's no heads. Can't we have both? But she can't be pretty and you 
cut me dead. That's how she lures you in. <laughs> you chop your head off. See? It all makes sense. All right. Go so, ahead, wait. John. Keep digging that. So this oh, thing, so this thing just became Kobayashi Maru. <laughs> yes. So I'm, uh, I'm tapping out. Uh -huh. B five. B five. Keep digging. I said Kobayashi Maru. I'm moving on. <laughs> This is a copy of Iron Man number 131 from 1980. Near Mint is the estimated grade of this book, which was signed by the great Bob Layton. As you can see to the lower left there, my friend, underneath the Hulk. So he was nice enough to provide this to us when he was here this past free comic book day. So a nice book signed by the great Bob Layton. Near Mint's the estimated grade, 45 bucks. Go look one up now. There's one there signed by Bob Layton up now on eBay. Go look at the price of that one. Come back and you should buy this one. B6. B6, the final book of this round is a copy of X23, number 7 from 2018. Near Mint or above is the estimated grade of this book, which features the first appearance of the character X Assassin. And it has a pretty phenomenal cover, too. It's just well done. The coloring of it's awesome. The soft focus lens on it's great. X23, 15 bucks. There you go, Jake. Two minutes and 20 seconds left. Awesome round number eight there. And we've got, as John just said, just over two minutes left. So plenty of time to pick some of these babies up. What do we got for A1? Son of Satan number two from 1976 is in very fine plus condition. And that copy's got white to off-white pages. So we all know that Son of Satan is coming to the Hulu. Susan Donovan for A3. A3. She so must be home drinking. Certain She's Susan Donovan picking up the Hobbit books there in I'm A3. Lots of time. Mike Weaver for B6. Thank you. B, B6. <laughs> oh, B6 to ah! Mike Weaver. Nicely done. So what did you say? Mike Weaver's picking up B6. Thank you, Michael. I think that's like his fourth one of those. That's uh, one of Susan, Weaver. actually. I think Weaver's cleaning up on that one. Oh, the X23? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he's trying to corner the market. Probably. Uh, so A4, Amazing Spider-Man one-shot from 2010. It's Amazing Spider-Man Dark Reign The List. So this features the Dark Avengers, and this was part of that whole Dark Reign era in Marvel. Which was awesome. It was awesome. From 2010, written by Dan Slott, $8, and it's in near mint or better condition. Then moving on over to A5, we've got a really cool New Mutants, number two. Love that cover with the Sentinels on it. That's the third appearance of the team, written by Chris Claremont. That particular copy has white pages and is in near mint to near mint plus condition. Just $15 for New Mutants, number three, in spot A5. B5, let's take a look there. That is Iron Man number 131 is in near yeah. mint condition. Near mint condition on the Iron Man number 131 sitting in spot B5 with a cover by Bob Layton and signed by Bob Layton himself. He was here for our free comic book day. Bob Layton. This past May, a God among Bob men. Layton, I'm contracted to say Bob Layton at least 10 times when we mentioned Bob Layton. AG's gonna help us take a look at A6 where we got a set of Vampirella number one. Otherwise Mr. Layton's attorney will call me. Cover A is by Bob Frank Layton. Cho, right there. It's a wraparound cover. Cover B is by Alex Ross. Know, Bob Layton. Cover C is by Joe Jusco. Cover E is Don't the photo cosplay cover. And the last one is Adam Hughes, cover F. Uh, the cover O on the top there by Art Germ, a.k.a. Stanley Lau, is a Layton 1 in 15 Got variant. B5 B5 is going to Michael Thompson. B5. B is in boy. I even it up. B is in like Beetlejuice, man. You gotta keep B is in it. baby. I even picked up the hey, Bob Layton. That's the end of round B number eight. Bob Layton. Thank you, Who baby bought? Jesus. Who bought Bob Layton? Michael Thompson. Woo! Setting up for round number nine. Awesome. Doing pretty good on the timing here. We got just two <laughs> minutes left. <laughs> <laughs> just two <laughs> rounds left. That That's actually blushed. Thirty-seven. That's awesome. You got him. You crushed him. He was actually embarrassed. That was good. Thank you. A5 for Scott Mercier there. That was a New Mutants book. Oh, New Mutants number three going to Scott Mercier. You're not going to hear the end of it later. Awesome. Is that a thing? It's okay, Pika. Thank you. A5? I know. I'm just making sure it Now Matt's all out of sorts. We love you, Pika. There he is. There it is. Go ahead, Jake. Save him. Batman Last Night on Earth, number two, is out this Wednesday here at the Hall and other fine local comic book shops near you. So this is the Scott Snyder, Greg Capullo Batman event that uh, is up to issue number two now under the DC Black label. It's been a really good read so far. 
yeah, it's just been one issue, but still been really good. Looking forward to checking this out. We still got copies of issue number one, right? Yep. On the shelves. Good. Awesome. Looks Pick like this up. issue is going to introduce uh, this story's version of Bane, apparently, and I'm sure some other characters will sneak in there. So great Capullo cover. It's awesome. Square bound. Really nice stuff. Sold the hell out of it. A lot of good Batman books out this week for all you Batman fans. We've got this. We've also got Batman Secret Files number two, and we've got the last issue of Batman, uh, Batman Who Laughs. Thank you. Number seven. Yeah, a lot of Batman stuff. Yep. Two big, two big back-to-back -back weeks for us. Be good. Last week's big House of X this week is yep. Powers uh, of X. Powers of Ten. Uh, very good, actually. Powers yeah, of Powers of Ten, of ten is is what Jonathan Hickman says is the actual title. Powers of Ten. So if you need that one, you probably want to send a note to Jake right away. If you're a subscriber here at the yeah, hall, we gonna, want to make sure you get one. We we got a ton of House of X, the and they one. still sold out. Quite so. a bit. And it's really good. It's well worth the hype. I'm really looking forward to seeing where it goes. But yeah, I like the first Last Night on Earth as well, so I'll definitely check this one out too. Some sand out stuff. Great job, A.G. and Matthew. Turn and flip the board as quickly as they do. This is en uh, we're entering the penultimate round, round number nine of ten. So we're going to finalize here. 120 books in two hours here in the Hall After Dark. Quite the cast of characters, and thanks everyone for your support. Always a lot of fun. I always like to bring you some new and cool books. Speaking of cool books. Right out of the gate, Bizarro World. A1. In the form of The Violator versus Bad Rock. This is from Image Comics. This is the entire set, issues one to four, from 1995. Near mint or above the estimated grade of this book. They feature Rob Liefeld covers, as you can probably tell. The big thing about this is they were written by Alan Moore. Huh. So Alan Moore is writing The he Violator wrote, versus Bad Rock. He wrote some really, cool. really weird image books. Violator stuff too, yeah, right? Yeah, like Alan, he, he Alan did Moore. a lot of Violator stuff. He did a lot of uh, Wildcat stuff for a bit. Yeah. yeah. So Al Alan Moore taking on the Violator versus Bad Rock from Image Comics. The entire four X lot estimated to be in near mint or above condition. Twenty bucks. Great buy. A two, Mr. A G. He's one of my favorite authors. He's awesome. Yeah, he does a nice job. He's so bizarre. Howard the Duck Annual, number one. So this is the only annual that was produced in this volume for this character. 1977, very fine, very fine, minus, with a Gene, Le uh, Gene Colon cover. Thank you. What what got you? A cover? A colon? Or was it colon? No, the, the Sinbad was never like this. Yeah, it's just Howard the Duck, so there it is. So that's culturally appropriate these days, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> How the Duck Annual number one, 1977, very fine, very fine, minus Gene Colan cover, only 15 bucks. Great stuff. A3, please, sir. A3 is a one shot, again, coming out of, uh, this is coming out of Siege. This is a Siege epilogue book. It features one of my favorite characters, The Sentry. There is no void. This is a one shot from 2010, near mint or above is the estimated grade of this book. Which features an appearance by the Dark Avengers as, as well as a Lenny and Al Yule cover. Did you read this? Yes, I did. I yeah. liked it. Yeah, does I like Bob Reynolds. Does it sew things up with him? No, no, it doesn't finish it up, but it takes him to a new level because where he oh. was at after Siege. And if people don't know who the Sentry is, you may want to check this character out. Really cool. Yeah, yeah, really yeah. interesting. Michael little Thompson, kind of a mentally a disturbed two. Superman wow. meets. Yeah. He's a very yeah, he's kind of oh. uh, he's uh, schizophrenic with Ooh, the powers of Superman. The there is no boy. There is no void. 8-3 eight, eight, to Tina cool. King. Yeah, I love the Sentry. Thanks, Tina. All right. Nice job. Great book. Thompson with the double haul again. Thompson, yeah. I think this... Who holds the current record for double hauls? Is it John Collins? Thompson, Michael, Michael Thompson? Thompson, Thompson yeah. So oh, we should get a plaque. A4. A4 is a copy. Speaking of Howard Duck, this is Howard the Duck issue number 30 from 1979. Near Mint is the estimated grade of this book, which features white pages, an awesome cover by Gene Colan, interior artwork by Al Milgram, and it features the first appearance of the Iron Duck. <laughs> Essentially him wearing a fire hydrant. <laughs> He's like a fire hydrant. <laughs> there it is. Howard the Duck, number 30, white pages, Near Mint, only 10 bucks. the a Iron Duck. Okay, so Wendell for A3 before Tina? Yeah. Thank you for the clarification. Thanks to you both. I'll try to find you another century one there, Tina. A5. A5 is a copy of Defenders, issue number 100 from 1981. Near Mint, Near Mint Minus is the estimated grade of this book, which features a classic homage cover, white pages, and the reveal that Hellcat is actually Satan's daughter. What? Satan gets around, man. He's a player. He's a player. That's all there is to it. So, yeah. Our friend, the Hellcat, is Patsy Walker, is actually the daughter of Satan. 
Remember that time yeah. Satan came and said, hey, what are you guys doing? <laughs> what are you guys doing? We're building a fire, Satan. Selling comics. <laughs> Say, <laughs> do you want to sell comics? Do you want to sell your soul to sell comics? I said, yes, yes. Satan, I do. Yes. <laughs> and here I am. Sons of bitches. All right. A6. <laughs> A6 is a 4X lot. This is a hot indie title called Gideon Falls. Each one of these is a first print. So you get the first print of cover A. You got the Jeff Lemire variant. You got the ever popular Jacques variant. And you got the virgin cover of number one, oh. which is the big one. There's already a TV adaption in the works. Gideon Falls, pretty evil, concentrated in a single area by the great Jeff Lemire. One of your favorites as well, right? Yes. So it's total speculated pack here. Great deal, 50 bucks for all four of them. Near Mint, Near Mint plus condition. Gideon Falls. Let's do it, That'd keep going. Messed up TV show. This is a 4X lot as well. I was feeling into the fours this weekend. These are Incredible <laughs> Hulks issues number 341, 342, 343, and 344. All of these are estimated to be in Near Mint minus or above condition. These all feature the writing of the great Peter David and Todd McFarlane internal artwork and covers. Early Todd McFarlane. Early Todd Father stuff. So you get some really cool Hulk stuff there. All four of them near mint, minus or above condition, 40 bucks. Love that, that Peter David. Anytime the man bull shows up, you know that's... You know it's a story. throwdown. And, yeah. and now you get that crazy ass leader. Yep. He's got like the AG, double ass going. AG, flip up to the cover with the leader. Yeah, let's right check there. out the leader. With like, his what giant what ass head. What the hell's going on there? And but he, but he keeps the, the mustache, He's though. rocking the porn stash. Yeah, he keeps the mustache just because he's clever. <laughs> I love him. It's Dr. Samuel Stearns, B2. B2 is a two-pack as well. These are copies of the Always Hard to Find Marvel Fanfare, issues number 38 and 39 from 1988. Near Mint or Above is the estimated grade of each one of these books, which features a Moon Knight story, that, which has Bill Sienkiewicz interior oh, artwork yeah. and that cover. So one of them actually has a Dazzler backup story on it, and the next one has a Hawkeye story, but these two have stories containing the Moon Knight. So those higher number of Marvel fanfare issues, those are kind of hard getting to tough find. to find. Yeah. yeah, I think it runs to 42, the volume, so you get oh, late in the yeah. game. Yeah. But really cool, high, uh, high quality paper, remember that deluxe format, really yeah. nice. Some cool stories that you don't get anywhere else. B3, please, bud. Thank you. This is a copy of Marvel Point One. This is a one shot from 2012. It has an estimated grade of near mint or above condition. This is the Nick Bradshaw variant and is the first appearance of Sam Alexander Nova. So the young kid that takes over for Richard Ryder, Sam Alexander, was introduced in this book. This is his first appearance. And they've all but said that if, uh, if and when Nova gets used in the Marvel when Universe Nova. movies, they're going to go with the Sam Alexander iteration. That'll be good. So we'll get the, uh, so, sort of like the old Marvel, we'll get the old Nova, yeah. like we missed the first run of them somehow. Yeah. Marvel. Marvel. Same way they yeah, do with that, uh, man. Tina King for B2. B2. Tina has nice copies of Marvel Fan. Yeah. B3. B3. Boy, Wendell. Tina, King, Tina and Wendell are battling it out. Yeah, they got some good ones, too. Some punch but holes. Tina's cleaning up tonight. Tina's... She must have Eric tied up in the closet. Yeah, Eric must be. Like, <laughs> is Eric in a coma? Tina, put the phone next to the, the door where Eric's locked in. I want to talk to him. <laughs> hey, Eric. Let us know he's yeah. okay. Knock twice, Eric, if you're able to. It'll be before, before if he's alive. Before. <laughs> <laughs> yes, five before. This is a copy of Thor <laughs> issue 500 from 1996. Near Mint or Above is the estimated grade of this book, which features a Mike Diodato wraparound cover and the first appearance of the character Hognir. I'm all about the first Hognir, but I can be persuaded with Mike Diodato wraparound cover. Worst mm -hmm. logo ever. Yeah, that was yeah, a really bizarre one. So, Thor gets a little funky here between the 480 to 700 mark. So, it's a good run. But, wraparound covered Mike Diodato, 8 bucks. Keep going, bud. I'm going to do that hairstyle for the B5. That's a, yeah, that one's tiresome. This is a copy of Star Wars issue number 8 from 2015. Near Mint or Above is the estimated grade of this. This is a 1 in 100 Stuart Immerman Ooh. sketch variant. So a 1 in 100. $25. Near Mint or Above. That's R2 D2. R2 D2. What's up? B6. What's up? B6 is a copy of Marvel Age number 16 from 1984. Near Mint is the estimated grade of this book. These were the uh, ones that you'd buy every, every week to tell you what was coming out. It was like the Wizard before the Wizard. It was, but it shows you all of the Marvel Age, uh, all of the Marvel books that were coming out at any special time for only 35 cents. Not sure what the hell's going on there, but I'm still going to go. Um, this book features the New Mutants with a Bill Sienkiewicz cover. 
This has a Power Pack house ad in it as, as well and has white pages. Copy of Marvel Age number 16, near mint from 1984. I, just kept, I dropped checks. Uh -huh. <laughs> I kept going. I just looked forward. <laughs> Ten bucks. There you go, Jake. Good luck. Thanks a lot. So we got just over a minute left, folks. <laughs> Uh, great, great row saved me. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, buddy. The batteries are running low. A1, we've got a set of Violator Listen, versus Bad Rock. The sun's getting yep. real low, big guy. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure what that has to do with anything, but it's worked somehow. So that's written by Alan Moore from Image Comics back in 1995. Just $20 in a near mint or better condition. You can read about uh, what I, Alan Moore thinks of Violator and... Johnny Max says it's a really weird storyline. Check it out. Yeah. Half half a minute left. Get some checks mixed. You got uh, check out <laughs> check out A5. It's Defenders number 100 featuring. Uh, it's got some white pages, and it's a near mint to near mint minus condition from 1981. Not a bad pickup. A6 for you speculators out there. A really nice set of Gideon Falls, written by Jeff Lemire from Image Comics. You get four copies of number one. You get the cover A, the Jeff Lemire variant. The jock variant, and you get the virgin cover. Susan Donovan, A6. A6, oh, Susan Donovan. Yeah. Oh, that was easy. Ooh. I think that was an in-house. Did you just call me easy? I didn't say a word. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. Keep going. I don't have to. That's Keep the end going. of round number nine. Thank you, baby <laughs> so Jesus. Right. Yeah, this is it. <laughs> Thank you, baby <laughs> Jesus. This is why Spanky wouldn't let girls in the He-Man Woman Haters Club. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> the reason Spanky was right. Round number 10 is coming up. Go ahead, dig the hole. <laughs> Listen, I'm so sure the hole is not even that deep. Last <laughs> round of the evening coming up next. Meanwhile, we're going to talk about what Marvel books are coming out this week. I'm so deep in the hole, I think I'm on top. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I thought I was above it all. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, man. <laughs> It's like, Matt looks like a bird. <laughs> Matt looks like a bird looking in a, in a window. <laughs> the hell was that, Matt? <laughs> uh, of course, you know, we're seeing it 20 seconds later, too. What a shit show. All right. Go ahead, Jake. We got tell nine tell us all about them, John. Well, these are from new from Marvel Comics this Wednesday at the Hall of Comics. We have new books coming out featuring the Conan number eight. Wow. Copy of Venom Annual number one. The Avengers number 22, Fantastic Four 12, and Captain America 12. I'm sure you can accentuate on each one of those, Jake. It's not too bad. Is, is the Captain America an Alex Ross cover? It is an Alex killer. Ross cover. Everybody's talking about that Fantastic Four book because we believe that this iteration of the Hulk we're going to get in this issue is the Immortal Hulk. We've come to know of late, and it's been a little while since seeing the thing had a real slap-down, drag-out fight. So everybody's looking forward to uh, the current I'm really sort of... The thing had a slap fight. <laughs> no, that probably will have a slap fight. Like it's just a real bitch fest. Uh, but yeah, so the thing in the Hulk square off, which is a classic, it's sort of right along the lines of the old Superman Flash race. Every now and then you got to have a good thing, Hulk <laughs> beat down. So that's going to happen in Fantastic Four number 12. Avengers number 22. Avengers 22 promises <laughs> to kick off a big Robbie Reyes slash Ghost Rider story arc. We're going to find out about Robbie Reyes and they're going to get back into, I think Johnny Blaze shows up. Because he's been sort of the, the king of hell for a so while. So it's like a ghost ride, a hoedown? Yeah, a little bit with the Avengers caught in the middle. Do you get the old guy riding the uh, the horse ghost rider? Uh, hopefully he'll show up. He <coughs> probably Do you will. get the guy that drove the uh, the World War One plane ghost ghost rider? You just made him up. There's no such person. I did. Wouldn't that be cooler? Yeah. <laughs> like he could be like Stockwood, you know, he could be the old, uh, like uh, the Red Baron type of ghost rider. That'd be good. Yeah, so... Uh, oh, write yeah, that one down. <coughs> Excuse me. You need a drink? No, excuse drink. me. Drink right there. Round number 10. It's just ice. A1. What do we got? A1. I put this in, in here for you, pal. This is a copy of <laughs> Super Villain Team Up, number two from 1975. Very fine, very fine, or above condition, actually, is this one. This is a team up between Dr. Doom and the Submariner that features an awesome Gil Kane cover. Bondage cover. Super Villain Team Up, number two, 1975. It's like Jake and Ryan. I had to point that very out. fine or above. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bondage there. covers. Actually, I'm, people I'm Doom, okay. people actually collect bondage covers. Oh, I'm sure it's they pretty do. Bizarre. So we Jake do point was very that. proud of that, though. He, he was. He said it with a little gumption, a little gusto. But A2. <laughs> <laughs> Hence the Dazzler. Here we right? go. This is a oh, copy right. of Star Wars <laughs> issue number 81 <laughs> from 1984. Near Mint is estimated grade of this book, oh, which is a newsstand copy, <laughs> and has a painted Tom Palmer cover. You're going to get a key. 
<laughs> so John Palmer did the artwork here, did the painting of that cover, which is fantastic. Overstreet guide for this one is sixty bucks plus. This thing does have white pages, and it is only forty-five dollars. Console looks like about 30, 40 years older than he did in the movie. Solo. He just looks determined. It's crazy that book's like in the in the guide is that much. Space, yeah, space and it's a newsstand too, so yeah. the guide's sixty plus. It's a great book. Paint to cover, and it's got any. Well, the biggest deal is very it's got Boba Fett on it too. Very stoic. So Boba very Fett cover that you can see him about to do nothing behind the layer. Pretty typical. His A3 posing for his trading card. Boba yeah, Fett, love it. him. Yeah, yeah. Copy of Amazing Spider-Man Annual Number Twelve from 1978. Very fine, very fine. Plus is the estimated grade of this book, which features an awesome John Byrne cover. Interior artwork by John Romita Senior. I stress Senior. Gil Kane did the interior artwork as well as the secondary story that Gil Kane provided work on as well. So an awesome copy of this book for only fifteen dollars. Very fine, very fine. Plus, just a great John Byrne cover. So that was back in the day when they had the live-action Spider-Man show on TV, and they had to slap that banner on all the Spider-Man. I know, fans. huh? The Spider-Man, the old TV sensation, the both TV of them. Josh Alex Ray Three. Yeah, yeah. Nicholas Hammond, the guy that was in the Sound of Music, the kid that was in the Sound of Music, became Spider-Man. Really? 1978. It's pretty interesting. Oh. Pretty, pretty awful. Oh, yeah, it still has. Yeah, it's yeah, something you gotta check out. A A four, don't do it. A four, don't I? I'm telling you, don't. This is a copy of Eternals number twelve from 1977. Near Mint, Near Mint minus the estimated grade of this book, which features white pages, has a Jack Kirby written cover and artwork extravaganza. And the Eternals has already been announced as a movie for Marvel coming up. So get your Eternals while you can have the Eternals. This has white pages in the first appearance of the Unimind. Castle. You're gonna say, Unimind and Unibrow. Look, look at that. Is that what you guys are, the Unimind? We're the Uni. Yeah, we're the Uni ass. <laughs> That's us. Unimind. First Unimind. A5. A5 is copy of Incredible Health number 331 from 1987. Near Mentor Above is the estimated grade of this. So, real nice copy of this book. Features white pages. It is the first time Peter David takes the Hulk for a spin. So, his first written work and also the second Todd McFarlane art. So they team up pretty quickly here, but this is a tough to find. There's another one where the book is higher than what we're offering it for. 25 bucks. Near mint or above. Really nice copy. A6. A6 is a copy of Marvel Premiere, Dominic Fortune. This is written by Mr. Len Wein and features a cover and interior artwork by Howard Shaken and inks by Terry Austin. It's the first time we get a colored Dominic Fortune story. So prior to that, he was featured in the black and white. Book. So we finally get him brought into the, the real time, and one of the Marvel magazines. I'm still waiting probably. to win that Toys R Us shopping spree. Yeah, keep waiting. Although they're getting <laughs> and the bicycle, they're, they're getting ready to of. reopen, so you might they be able to cash they in. Already are, I think. Yep. In cash Toys R Canada. Canada. Really? Hmm? Well, wouldn't you call it Toys R Canada? Probably. Right. No, it's Toys R Us, eh? <laughs> Toys R US. That's it. So All that's right, Dominic Fortune. Michael Thompson, Michael Thompson for A6. There you go, Michael. I was just waiting for Michael to say A6, Dominic Fortune. Oh, who's got himself in the ball? Ah, blows. Totally random. <laughs> not random. Really I know. Oh, no. It's no, not. It's unbelievable. <clears throat> B hey, coming around the corner. I have no clue what these are when I put them up. B1. So this one here needs a little bit of discussion because I, you know, this is a copy of She Hulk number one from 1989. So these books are super hot right now. So anything with She Hulk, John Byrne, especially. Um, this one has a detached lower left hand cover. So it's a newsstand. That's what the killer is. So it's got a detached cover in the lower left hand corner. Otherwise, it's a great looking book across the board. So a newsstand copy, only eight bucks. If it did not have the detached lower cover staple right there you're probably looking at 40 50 dollar book but just a great one to have it's still in awesome shape it's kind of mm. bum bums me out but pass around to a good home for eight bucks b2 b2 is a high grade copy of the iron fist number 10 from 1976 near mint or above so near mint near mint plus is the estimated grade of this book which features white pages and is written by chris claremont artwork by the great john byrne and has a dave cochran cover pretty awesome stuff Martial arts, Iron Fist, Shang Chi. Can you lay it down? You know what I'm saying here? B3. B3 is a copy of Batman Annual Number Four. Near Mint, Near Mint Plus is the estimated grade of this book, which features a cover by the great Sean Gordon Murphy, who is known for his White Knight in his uh, brand new series that went out last week. Right? We got the White Knight with Azrael. Yep. Sold a boatload of them. So yep. people are psyched. Jack and Pump, Sean Murphy cover of the Batman a Annual Number Four. Eight bucks. B4, taking us home. 
B4 is a copy of Uncanny X-Men number 282 from 1991. This book is estimated to be in near mint or above condition. Features the first appearance of the character Bishop and does have white pages. So we usually denote the pages because people are interested. Is it white? They off white? It can be cream colored. A little more detail, especially for the collector. So 15 bucks for this one. B5 AG. Taking us home for the last two. This is a copy of Guidance of the Galaxy issue number 10 from 2016. Near Mint, Near Mint Minus is the estimated grade of this book, which is a Death of X variant and was sold out. Pretty awesome cover. Ten bucks. Eight bucks. Going down by the second. <laughs> okay, actually, it's going up. Ten bucks. B6. Last one. Finish it up. All right. This is a Ryan. I'm calling this the Ryan Express. To use a Nolan Ryan this is a Ryan. Now you put this together. Why don't you introduce this one? Because I'm really. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so this is for all you art germ cover lovers out there. That... Germophobes is what we call them. Uh, germophobes. Yes. All right. Art germophobes. This is a ten cover set of the Supergirl art germ covers. AG, why don't you start flipping through those? That would be awesome. All first prints. All first prints. All art germ Supergirl in his awesomeness. So, that is all there. Did you rehearse this? I did. <laughs> yeah, it's not very long. You can't nope. tell why you're behind the computer at all. I know, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, Ryan, you were, you were really jacked and pumped about these, so I wanted to make sure you got I was jacked and pumped, out. yes. You brought it up, you said, look at this 10X set, man, you got to put this up. I said, ah, that's great, why don't you get it? Hey, so it's Supergirl, awesome. it's Art Germ, he has different eras of her costumes on there. It's just fantastic. So these were the B covers Those for were Supergirl the covers. at the time. It, so it's like a 300 word essay. You gotta do all 300 words, Brian. You're exactly. Done. I'm, I'm done. I uh, use Cliff Notes. Uh, yeah, it's very but a really cool set. Yeah. <laughs> all first prints, all action, all the time here at the Hall of Comics. So that's it. That it's is my it. turnaround. Two minutes left. Take us round home, Jake. Sell 10. some stuff. This is the last round Buy of the evening. Buy some shit. Let's go. The last two minutes left of the evening. Carrie Plenty. Jansen for A1. Carrie, Carrie Jansen's Jansen. right. picking up A1. Super villain team up. Thank Jake you, and Carrie. Ryan. There you go. Let's check out spot A2. It's Star Wars number 81 from 1984. That happens to be a newsstand copy. Dave Finn for B6. B6 Woo! is going to Dave Finn. You hear, you hear how excited Ryan was there? Yeah. Thanks so much, nice Mr. Ryan. Finn. The Thanks, Ryan. Those are real, those Picking are really that up. Nice yeah, yeah, those nice. are beautiful covers. Great job, Josh Dave. Josh Alex for B3. B3. Is that B3 to Josh Alex? B3 is Batman Annual number four with the Sean Murphy <laughs> cover. Awesome cover. So back to that Star Wars cover sitting up there in spot A2. It's in near mint condition and features white pages. The Overstreet Guide on that says $60. We're selling it tonight for $45. Boba Fett. Features Boba Fett on the cover. Boba That's Fett. all you need to know. Boba Over there in A4, it's Eternals, number 12 from 1977. Of course, we got the movie coming up. It was confirmed at the San Diego Comic-Con a couple of weeks ago, a couple of days ago. White pages on that near mint, near mint minus copy, just $20. It's got Jack Kirby cover, Jack Kirby Writing, Jack Kirby staples, Jack Kirby, Kirby, Kirby Jack Kirby pulp the paper that it was printed on, and it's the first appearance Jack of the Kirby Unimind. It in his back. Jack Kirby he did. Box. He did. Oh, I think Kirby they they used his blood in the ink. That's All right. In no, a, I actually kissed it, that. A5, Incredible Hulk number 331 from 1987. So that's the first time that uh, Peter David picked up pen to paper there and started writing the Hulk. Uh, book came out in 1987. It's $25 near mint or better condition. The first print, Incredible Hulk number 331. We got under half a minute left. Let's check out B1 down there in the bottom row. That's the She Hulk number one. John made a point that uh, has a detached staple in the um, lower left, but it's a newsstand copy of a very hot book, so we're selling it tonight for eight bucks. What a great pickup. Check it out. John Byrne She Hulk. Those things are climbing. And that is, got to say, just Fine about first. it. X-Men, Guides of the Galaxy. Thanks, yeah. everybody. So that is it for episode number 55. Thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks for everybody's help here at the hall tonight. We got a full house and everybody chipped in. We really appreciate it. And episode number 56 is going to be back next week on August. Help me out, boys. Third. No. 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 What? Scott, Scott, Scott Listen, Mercier I'm reading a teeny five. tiny number. Scott Mercier. Yeah. Nice Scott great Mercier book. Scott Mercier five. That would be the fifth. What's that? Five. Scott got something? It'll be the fifth. Come see how big they are. A five to <laughs> Scott Mercier. August fifth. Fifth. August fifth. We'll be back. Marlon Maya for B four. You want to get that? B four to Marlon. Thanks, Marlon. Book for fifteen bucks. Yeah, picking up the first. 
first bishop to Marlin. Oh, wait a minute. Marlin, Marlin, you got yourself a double haul. Marlin can't see the double haul, but we're going to put it back up. Marlin got a double haul. It's a Deadpool variant, Marlin. Got a little blackout going on here. Too late. We're back. And they just rewind to Matt's face. I have to screen grab that thing. So I think, uh, unless we want to go around the room, I think we're about done. I think we're, uh, yeah, I think we're done getting back after a week off. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Thanks yep. to Harley D for a great round five and the fun. Don't have do to have her back. I do, folks. You hear Fine. that? Invoices out tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's good. Matt? Uh, this this is you. Pika. Uh, Pika. That's it. Matt's done. Pika, Pika. That's it. AG? Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> All right. See you next week. Thanks, Thanks for tuning in. Woo! Woo! Wednesday. 55. That's insane.